Baby. No, I'm just saying, like, they're out. I don't care about my thumbs. They're thumbs. fucking Wolverine thumbs. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Whitney called them radishes. <laughs> Baby. Okay, I'm sorry. Five, four, three, two, one. I believe in you. Do you believe in me? Welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. I am your captain. I am your leader, Captain Bob. Bob Lee. Bob Young Lee. No one knows my middle name. And I just threw that out there. Young. Y-O-U-N-G, not Y-U-N-G. That's those other gooks. <laughs> All right. Oh, mm-hmm. We've got... Uh, <laughs> we've got... Um, <laughs> we've got this white fucking piece of shit right here. And I love him so much, man. I love you, dude. I fucking love you, dude. George. We got George Kimmel, man. We got his fucking handsome but retarded fucking white <laughs> cousin or whatever. You know what I mean? That guy. We got uh, that guy. Gilbert. <laughs> Galang- Galong. Galongo. Galongo. And we have my beautiful princess. My beautiful princess, wow. um, Kalila Kuhn. And I met her on Tinder. Everyone knows. And um, five years deep in a relationship. And it's going well. And <laughs> wow, what a week. What a day. We've got, th- we got really, we got two really special people in the room right now. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've got, listen, listen, a couple of months ago, this white guy, George, said, oh, oh my God. Fine, everything's good. Um, <laughs> said, you know, have you heard of H3 Podcast? And I said, um, vaguely, because, you know, I don't really know much. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then I Googled it, and um, I knew immediately after I Googled it, I go, I have to do it. And I did it, and I met these two, Ethan and Ela, right? And they're, the, they're, they're a married couple, and they, they're the leaders of another cult called the H3 Podcast. And I didn't think that they would ever come to our compound. Because right? this is a compound? Yeah, this is a compound, our compound. And, um, but they did, and here they are. Give H3 Podcast, Ela right. and Ethan, a round of applause. Now you can talk. Yeah. yeah. I have to say, you have, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you have a bit of a ritual at the start of these. Yes, I and do. And you make the guests very uncomfortable. <laughs> because you're yeah. very serious. Like, you're joking, but you're serious. I'm never serious. Because you said, don't talk. But yeah. then you make it a joke, but it's very serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've seen you do it before, too. Is that, I, a, is that part of your ritual? Can I, why, do you know why I do it? Is it a power play? I want the power. Yeah. Yeah, so I need the I power on my court, right. right? And I need to win. Right, okay. Uh, but the thing is, is this, though. So, um, I respect you. Thank you. I really do. I, you guys Thank remind you. me of us. Right, you guys are bigger, but better. Bigger and better. And better. You guys are bigger and better, bigger and better. but we're very similar in many ways. <laughs> right, right. Both Asian. And let me. No, 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 no. Yeah. What is that? Let me say, we yeah. have the same watch. <clears throat> the shark watch? No way. What are the wow. chances? I'm not wearing wow. it, but it, that's my watch. Either wears that a lot. Wow. This is my watch. That's I never watch. take this off. <laughs> Wait, it's the same that? style and pattern? Same color, everything. And it's not that. I mean, it's a popular, relatively popular it's fucking watch. Fucking weird. We're already connected. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Because you bought yours on like. Amazon. Mm-hmm. You got yours on you Amazon. Look, you look goes deep on on weird stuff like that. So that's <laughs> yeah, we're rocking that. You know what also we're similar is is that we don't deserve our girlfriend no. or wife. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm I I'm remind myself of that every day. Yeah. Because you know, when I looked at you at first, I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, now, but now, but but now that I know what's in the inside, yeah, you know, you're you're like, is there a fruit that looks ugly but that's delicious in the inside? Uh, uh, durian, kumquat. Durian, the durians are kumquat. smelling. That oh, you're a kumquat is really just straight at home. You're a kumquat. You're a bit of a kumquat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A kumquat. You know, Thank you. No, I am. I'm definitely a kumquat. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I pulled her because when I met her, I wasn't successful. I was mm-hmm. mu- I was even fatter than I am now. Yeah, I was unkept, and I look back. I'm like, damn, I was a real kumquat back then. <laughs> you know? like, Classic how'd I kumquat. Yeah. And you guys met in Israel when you were yeah. on your yeah. birthright trip, right? That's right. And so, like, how did it happen? Like, how did it go down? I mean, at first, it wasn't much. We were just kind of like, <clears throat> we were just hanging out, like, I don't know, on the same kind of headspace or whatever. Yeah. But then after after birth, right, he went back and then we stayed in touch on Skype. And then he was actually very like 
kept hitting me up, you know, and then I was persistent, persistent, very persistent. I don't say aggressive. Aggressive is the wrong word these days. Oh, I mean persistent. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't want to be Morgan Freeman right now. No, 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 no aggressivity. Yeah, it was also very like he was playing guitar. Oh! By the way, you know what's funny? Funny. The minute. Gross. The minute that we started actually dating, I was like, all right, I don't need to play this shit anymore. And I stopped playing. Oh, guitar. really? Yeah. I don't wait, wait, anymore. let me ask you this. So um, you'd be Skyping. Yeah. And you're like, hold on a second. I want to grab my guitar. Oh, maybe let me get, let me get my guitar. <laughs> yeah. And would you sing originals? Yes. I wrote a song for her. Oh. <laughs> you fucking suck. Uh, it was, it was. Baby, if I did that, right, you would never have dated me. It's That's pretty. True. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's borderline pathetic. Yeah. No. no. She's like, yeah, she's like, yeah. It sounds like pathetic, but it, it was it was pretty special. It was sweet. Oh. <laughs> it was sweet. Did you do poetry too or just a guitar? Well, I think that my playing is kind of poetry. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. And so how long did that take? I mean, we talked about it on our, when I was there, but well, I, there was like you know, a my fans, year, people. A full year of talking on Skype. You waited a year? You well, the thing was, and, for a year. And she even then, there. even I then, I, I went to visit for two months, and then I went back. And yeah. then there was another year of Skype. Tough. There was a man involved, too, on her side mm. that I had to... <laughs> and apparently a handsome, muscular one, right? Yeah. Well, she, she too. No, I had one. But no, it's you had good, a that Spanish football player. Uh, but those were just. You had a rugby player in Australia. It's good to know. It's good. Yeah. It's good to know that a couple guys like us can muscle those guys out. Yeah, but we have, you know what? We had to put in so much groundwork. Though. I know, but that's it sucks. How, that's what. That's why they lost. Because they're like, I'm. Yeah, handsome, but did we win? I'm muscular. Right. I have a big dick. I don't feel like I won. They're like, I have a huge dick. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, then you're, but they're like, I don't have to try. And then you you swoop in with the songs. With right, the calls, right, 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 right. With the hay, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't lift up her skirt like Morgan Freeman. Not yeah, aggressive, yeah, yeah, yeah. persistent, persistent. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah well, you know what? Um, you, I guess you, are, we are lucky in that way because when I was a kid, I used to look in the mirror and I used to look at my reflection and go, "You're unfuckable." I did the same. Thing. <laughs> you, did, you did. You know what? Yeah. In my backyard when I was a kid. Are yeah. you kidding? Or are you real? Not being real. I'm, I used to. I thought I was unfuckable. There was a mirror. There was a window with, that was very reflective. In my backyard as a kid, I was probably 12 or 13 at the time, maybe a little younger. <laughs> and I would stare at that mirror. Yeah. It was a window. You know, it's funny. It was a window to my parents' room, and they must have seen me on the other side just being like. <laughs> <laughs> it was so reflective. I didn't see inside. But yeah. I would be like, damn, you are so brutally ugly. <laughs> it was quite sad. Are you, you would say that to yourself? I would stare at myself. Yeah. And just be so sad about it. Yeah. But I, I do Somewhere in my life, I just stopped caring about it. Yeah. I used I to just spit at my own reflection. Did you really? Yeah, I just oh, spit on the mirror. Are you kidding? Yeah, I go. Are you like kidding? Or no, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and then, what it, were you thinking to yourself when you did that? Well, here's the thing: is is that um, in my 20s is when I looked in the mirror and I said, "There's something interesting going on." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're um, a kid, and especially being a minority, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to pull that card. But you look different than, than a lot of people that I grew up with. Like I lived that. in a little community called yeah. Green Valley in Poway, and it was a lot of white people, mm -hmm. and they among they stand amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. I knew some flips, you know, mm -hmm. her kind, mm -hmm. you know. What's a flip? Filipino. Filipino. You know? I hate that term. <laughs> Are you full Filipino? Half. Half. But oh. I grew up there for a long. Uh, well, I was there until I was 15. She's half Filipino, half oh. human. <laughs> right, white. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyway, um... <laughs> Wait, shit on a tire race. <laughs> just shit on the entire, entire Philippine uh, country. I was kidding, it was a joke, and I, it came out wrong. Pretty sure we were like, just don't talk about race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, all right, that's on him. Just don't talk about race. All right, tell me more about flips. And, uh, <laughs> I know where you got to go. But yeah, I mean, it's like I I didn't really own up to my um, sexiness in, until my twenties. I, I, stand up is what really changed my life. It gave you confidence. Mm. It gave me a thing, you know. If here's a the selling thing. point. That's it. That's mm. very good. That's very clever that you said that. When it's you a, met her, what was your selling point uh, besides guitar. the guitar playing? Oh, <sighs> the man. only guitar. Play. My selling point was that. Did you have big dreams? I didn't have a good one. I'm gonna be honest with you. No. I think I was just a sweet, charming guy. If I'm just gonna he be completely was, frank, he was. It was very. That's like, all I had. To, it was very different, you know, because I'm from Israel, and the Israeli guys are more like the Jersey Shore. 
Uh-huh. Guys, uh, right. yuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially where I grew up, they were mm. like that. Do you know what? I th- I think so, back sweet and charming. I think I was just different, and you like Yeah, that. it was different. I think I'm giving myself too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because I didn't have a good answer to that, and I still don't know why. I'll tell you why. I don't even know you. I don't even fucking know you, Ethan, that well. You know, I, mean, I did. I mentioned that one time on H three went yes. at your place, right? Yep. And this is our second encounter, really. Let's be real, yeah. okay? <laughs> but there's something about in the inside. The, oh, how, why do you think people listen I to your fucking? Tell me more. Why do you think people? <laughs> why do you think people listen to your your guys? I honestly podcast? don't know. If I'll tell you what out. it is. All right, you're funny, mm-hmm. and you um, you're just enter- an, an entertaining guy, and I can see why. Mm. You know. Keep going, dude. Also, yeah. I was very closed off uh, person. Mm-hmm. I was way worse than I am now. Like yeah. I wouldn't talk to anyone. I was very shy, mm-hmm. and he kind of made me open up for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, Just, I mean, w- w- being on a podcast probably wasn't even in your no. wheelhouse of thinking. No way. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> That's how she yeah. feels. You know, really? when we uh, first met, he outed me with so much like personal information about myself mm-hmm. that. Wait, what do you mean outed? He, like, I remember like, when we first started dating, I, <laughs> he talked about how I had just gotten an abortion. In fact, on, I heard while I was at the oh. clinic, oh. I heard a pre-recorded podcast talking about how I was about to get an abortion. But can I, and I, that, oh, don't worry about it. I paid. He was like <laughs> cruel about it. How did that make you feel? Pretty awful, but there was a part of it that was so liberating. Mm. There was a part of it that yeah. was like, okay. It's called freedom, lady. <laughs> Yeah, they're called flying. Well, you should have asked first. But what I'm saying is, do you want to fly, babe? Yeah, it's like you're the shackles are gone, you're bitch. A, you're you're welcome. Run around, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There was a part of it that made me take this, you know, this deep, you know, sigh of relief. Yeah. Where okay. I'm just like, okay, fuck it, it's out there. I give mm-hmm. up. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to cover or, you know. So hide anger something. and relief. No, I just yeah, it was a little bit of both. Can I just say this? Yeah, it was an accident. Okay, I was talking about the abortion on a podcast, and I didn't know that cameras or anything was on. And then, even after they said, I think that we recorded a little bit of it. I said, "Don't air that part," and they did anyway. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Is that true? That's one hundred percent. And then also, secondly, when she called me and said, "Hey, my my homies are listening right now," and you just you know, she was upset. Mm-hmm. Were you angry at the guys? That's pretty. Well, that's... it's he's a powerful guy, so I didn't really want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who who was it? David Chow. You know him? No. He's an artist. Yeah, and so anyway. Was it your podcast? I'm confused. It was his podcast. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was kind of like the Andy okay. Warhol of downtown LA. Got it. Yeah, Got yeah. It. And I didn't okay. want to. Interesting. Scream at him because um, he employs my brother. My brother works with him, and mm. there was a whole thing. So, um, and then on top of that, I thought that she was going to leave me. Mm. And I have 16 years sobriety. At the time, I had, what, 12 years, mm-hmm. right? And I, I went to a bar to relapse. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's how devastated I was. So, you know, let's put it in the context here. Yeah. I mean, I fucked up. I mm-hmm. did say it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But he continues to say it on I still every say it. single podcast. <laughs> because after, after <laughs> now, now that it's out there, right? The Wait, where's the harm? It's out there now. Well, it sounds like it wasn't really your fault. It sound, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it wasn't in fact, at all. He says it so much that when I'm on a pod on a, someone else's podcast by myself, I talk about it. <laughs> in fact, now, I brought it up today. The darkest hour has become yeah. the thing you guys talk the most about. Yeah, yeah how about that? Uh, and a quick message from our sponsor. Beep boop pop, beep beep boop pop, Rebels Refinery pop, beep boop boop pop. You guys, um, we we don't endorse products we don't use. Yep. And one of our fans, Tiger Belly fans, has a product called Rebels Refinery. You can find it in Targets, correct? That is correct. Exclusively at Targets. Exclusively at the Target. And it's soaps. It's got lip balm. They've got um, uh, natural, uh, premium natural skin for humans. And I'm a human, and I use it. Watch. I open this up like this, <laughs> yeah. right? I open them up like this, uh-huh. right? And I do this. I pull one out like wow. this, right? And I put it on my face, guys. And you know what? No zits. How do you feel? I feel so good. And I feel so refreshed. Honestly, Rebels Refinery, guys, it's dope products. So we think Rebels Refinery is easily the best men's grooming brand for the price on the market. They also have the greatest lip balms for women and men. It's available exclusively at all Target locations. If you want to order online, you can use the promo code <laughs> TIGERBELLY for 20% off if you are a true papaya of the slap kingdom yeah go buy some i'm being real go buy it and now, the look, look at the package dude the skull 
I love it, man. Put it on you, put it on you. How do I open it? Oh, God. <laughs> like that, like that. Okay. Hey, here, here, here. Here, use it, use it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, He's yeah, putting it. Bobby's Black putting Black all over. Oh, oh there okay, it is. Okay, Rebels Refinery, guys. <laughs> and now back to the podcast. <laughs> well, I, I find that, like, you know, when you expose your embarrassing, you know, your, your character defects sure. or th- things that you've done that are embarrassing or I'll never tell anybody, you know, yeah. that I've told everyone everything. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's healthy or not. I but think it's good. I've noticed that about you, and I love that about you. Like I like the uh, Down syndrome guy molesting you. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just to be able to just say that and move on. I think is liber- I can see liberating to you, and I think it makes people respect you too in a way. This is like, oh fuck! Like, how do you come to terms with something that dark that casually? You know, it's yeah. it's interesting, and it's admirable. But I did it out of survival. Mm-hmm. You know, I did it out of um, just to to keep my career going. It's weird. It what happened was after I was on Mad TV, I've talked about this before many times, but I'll do it again. Um, it's okay. People want to listen to it. I um, I couldn't work, and nobody wanted me in the town. You know, you know. I wanted Why is to, that? I think um, I, you know, Mad TV had a weird reputation around town at the time. It did. It there wasn't. It, no one became a star after that show mm. at that time. Right, and um, it was just seen as ghetto. And mm-hmm. casting directors would be like, "No, nah, I'm not gonna see him. He was on Mad TV and, and whatnot." And they would say that. I, I mean, mm. to my reps, and they, I would get the information. And um, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna. And I was at Opie and Anthony in New York, mm-hmm. and this is when Get Greg Giraldo and um, Patrice O'Neill were still alive. <clears throat> right. And I went on that show, and they ripped me to pieces. About what? Just about how fat I am. And they just came in? They were like, yeah, hey, I mean, come they on just, in. Yeah, they were just ripping me apart. Hmm. To, to the point, they were doing pranks on me. And it got to the point where I got up from the show. <laughs> That's so And I fucking up. left. That's so fucked up. Wow. Like, almost crying. Wow. And I'm like, oh, I'm never going to do that again, you know? <laughs> and then the next year... Mm-hmm. I'm back in New York, and mm-hmm. I look at my press pack, and it says I have to still I have to do opening and Anthony again. <laughs> and they're like, I go, I don't want to do them, and they're like, you have to. That's the only real big one you have. Mm. But this time, when I went on the show, I exposed everything up front, mm. and it took the power away from them. Mm. You know, it's like um, they couldn't use anything against me because I had already like thrown it out there. Mm. So I threw out. I was I had sucked dicks before that I. That was all from that one interview. Yeah. Damn. I sucked dicks. I was molested. Just went out know, guns blazing. Yeah, I just went blazing. What's up you know, now? Through, yeah, and then they were but like, when he "Oh." He runs out of material. Then he gets he, he gets his girlfriend's information. <laughs> <laughs> then he throws everyone under the bus. So he's not just talking about his deepest darkest. He takes our deepest darkest. And he throws it all out there. It's a, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. It's a character defect. And I, so I, and I, did you feel powerful in that meeting? Did you flip the tables? Or was there? Uh, did it work for you? Not only moment? did it work, but it became. I became friends with all those guys from that mm-hmm. encounter. Oh, yeah, I mean those all those guys like, um, especially like Jim Norton. Mm-hmm. Him and I like. I just did his a couple weeks ago when he's in town. He calls me and we're good buddies. And I think that it also taught me how to do press and how to do what my thing is mm. and um you know a lot of times when comedians go on the road they'll tell like the dj or whatever hey just mention this and i can do a bit mm. right so how's your mom or oh, my mom you know and they do a bit from their act mm-hmm. right and i'm like i don't want to do that it's like not real yeah <laughs> so i talk about like how i really feel about things and how i feel about my life and um it, I think it really well, you're re- just being genuine yeah maybe you do that organically well I don't have bits that's why I mean yeah I wish I had bits no you don't I don't have any bits you don't do stand up I'm, I'm bitless you're bitless <laughs> you are yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so that, that's, that way you just do it that's your thing then yeah it's just to talk and how you feel and well all like that. when I go to a show like this what I tell myself before because I hate when I feel like I'm trying to be funny so what I says to myself is don't try to be funny be boring that's my thing to be like, just be your, that's how I try to psych myself into being genuine. <laughs> be boring. Don't try to be funny. And that, helps me. that helps me. No, but that. Because I hate when I'm trying to be funny and I see myself being like, hey, I'm yeah, on. Yeah. And that's, right. that's real, like coming up that's, to this building in the car. We were like, yeah. okay. 
Try to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being real? That's what you said to yeah, each other. Be a comquat. Yeah. That be is a so <laughs> fucking great. Yeah, because I get stressed out. You know, like before uh, I did Hot Ones, I was fucking oh, yeah. losing my mind because I love that show so much. Yeah, <laughs> and I love Sean Evans and I love everything they do. And uh, I was just like, be just be fucking boring. You know, that was my mantra. Yeah, just don't try. Just be boring. Just answer his questions. You know, and did it work out? Yeah, yeah. it was great. Right? I was really happy. Did with you finish? You came out. I finished. I finished yeah. too. Yeah. But here's the thing with that one is what I do is this is I, so I, I also don't listen. Like when I did Hot mm. Ones, I didn't know anything yeah. about it. <laughs> really? And yeah. And the, the, one of the, an assistant at the agency that I'm with goes, I, I think I can get you on it. I'm like, I don't want to know. I don't even want to do it. <laughs> He's like, I think you should do it. Like everyone's been, he gave me the list of people. I go, that's all I want to know about it. I'm not gonna look it up. Why? Mm -hmm. Just that's how because you if I it. if I think that it's like you know like today I got Anna Ferris people calling. Do you want to do Anna Ferris? I know her. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a fan, mm -hmm. right? I think that she's a, a great. Mm -hmm. You know, I like I watch her movies. I go, that she's great. Mm -hmm. I was in a movie with her. Mm -hmm. She was in The Dictator. Uh, yeah. She was mm -hmm. you know I had five lines, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> but we did <laughs> yeah. spend days together. You know, mm -hmm. I love her. Mm -hmm. But because I have this thing i elevate her mm -hmm. right it's gonna fuck with me yeah you need yeah. you know what? you're you're about power balances i feel like mm. <laughs> wow because it's a whole you know what i mean <laughs> I, i'm learning so much about you're myself very, I'm power, very, power balancing you're very aware of power balance <laughs> yeah like with you right i didn't really i knew that you guys were big mm -hmm. but i didn't read you know, we're even, big in a different way. You no, know, you're big in the same way. You're world. in the fucking same way. But I told George, I go, I didn't want to know your names until when I met you guys, until mm -hmm. right when we walked into mm -hmm. the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. I go, what are their names? Yeah. It's like Ethan and Isla. <laughs> Isla. 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 And I go, okay. Yeah. And I walked in. And I By go, the way, that show was great. Fan favorite. One of one not, of my favorite shows. It was, had. I got so, so many good responses. It was so fun. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I got so, <laughs> so <okay>. take a breath. <laughs> I got so, don't what's this? I like that. I like power move. I don't want to power move. Power move. I don't have power balance right now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, power balance. Is that what I do, babe? Oh my god. Uh, that's uh, you know you. Tell me about your parents. Do you have powerful parents? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Well, you don't know my fucking parents. Why would you say something like that? Your brother got hit by a keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was violent. Oh. He was very violent and alcoholic. He was a rageaholic, mm -hmm. and he um, he was just kind of like a bad dad. I think. Mm. You know, he's sick now, and I love him now. But um, growing up, I just remember like, in the back of our house, it was like a trail, and in the trail, you could like, go, and there was a cliff. Mm. And I used to walk to this cliff and sit there and just look up at the stars and go, can you please kill him? I mean, <laughs> it's like the cutest little thing. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. God, can God you please, please kill him? my father down? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> God never did, you know. And what about your mother? My mother we don't was... We to talk about this. No, before. I want to. Okay. I'm not afraid of anything. My mother is um, also very... Uh, I drove her to violence. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I drove her to violence. I can believe that. Why yeah. do you... Uh, you're just your mom hit you and you were just finding it by saying you were a little shit or well no i think my my mom gen generally isn't that violent but she couldn't that was the last tool in the toolbox mm. she tried you're every crazy single thing yeah uh, the way she explains it to me is that he didn't know how to receive any form of love or affection mm. or attention it's like everything that she tried sports instruments or even just like Bobby's hyperventilating <laughs> she just didn't know like he was, he was just like a little Tasmanian devil basically right. and you responded to violence yeah I mean no I didn't respond I responded negatively to it right, but sure. um, that was at the end her last thing you know was they, they would punch me in the face wow and Do you because, have siblings yeah Steve too Steve though my brother Steve um, growing up was the one that was like the one he got straight A's. He was the chosen. Rest, good son, well, yeah. not in, in his twenties. He fell off. Mm. Mm. But um, y younger, he was like a Christian. Went to church. Mm -hmm. You know, was on the wrestling team. Mm -hmm. Got straight A's. Mm -hmm. It's only later in life where he became me. And he he grew up under the same conditions that you did. I How, love what you're doing. You know what I love? Difference? I love what you're doing right now. Do you, you know what you just did? 
Can I want to tell you what you just did? Sure. You pulled a Tom Segura just now. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's you know, got a trait. He's got a patent. No, no. Mouth. What he does was he he when he was on our podcast, and I want you to I want you to do it. I, I want you to keep doing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, right? I want yeah, to keep you doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not okay. taking it away sure. from you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we're talking about power balance right now. You know? <laughs> sure. yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, is that what he did was he became the host, mm. oh. and you switched it a little bit. And I'm I like what you're doing. I'm no, intrigued. I like what you're doing. I'm following the thread. And but that's your the thing is is that I want you to have your power too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. And it, I feel like we should yeah, do like yeah, 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 yeah. You know? We're gonna go fifty fifty here. Yeah. All right. Like so when, uh, the, what was that scene with the gnarly black dude and Arnold strike hands from Predator? Was that from Predator? Is it Predator? I don't Well Arnold I don't remember. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a, yeah, I don't was, remember that movie. That was us right now. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, but I guarantee it wasn't. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, I know you are. You're doing great. Yeah, yeah thank you. But uh, what was the question about my mom? What's the age difference? <laughs> what's about my mom? What's, yeah, yeah. What's the age difference between you and your brother? Three years. So yeah. you guys grew up under the same conditions. Well, I mean, you know, here's the thing: it's is that there's, you know, immigrants come here and they go, you know, the rules are just get straight. A listen. Yeah. And get straight A's, yeah. especially Koreans, yeah. my family, and um, you'll be fine. Hmm. I didn't do either one of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I did drugs at an early age. Well, I think the molestation when I lived in Minnesota when I was nine or whatever mm -hmm. got me all like mm -hmm. twisted, it, twisted up. up. And then I, when we came to San Diego at twelve or eleven, I I found marijuana and skaters and f Filipinos that. <laughs> You know, no, really, the Filipinos really said well, no, yeah. <laughs> no, because you know, you know, I, you know, and I, I don't mean that as a joke. What, what, what it is is that you have to imagine. I lived in Minnesota, where all I saw was white people. Minnesota is a rough. I mean, that's a weird place to grow up, kind of. Yes. Yeah. Especially in the seventies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In an Adina in Minnesota, it was like, it was you know, but then I came to um, San Diego and. Um, on the other, see, I live, I grew up in Poway, but on the other, the town next to us was Penasquitas. Penasquitas' high school, Mount Carmel, was 60% Filipino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In wow. fact, my senior year, my senior year photo is in the Mount Carmel yearbook. <clears throat> Do you know why? Why is that? Because when I, they, they used the same photographer, mm -hmm. and the, I was in the Poway high school pile, mm -hmm. and they couldn't believe it. <laughs> so they put it onto the no Mount way. Carmel pile. And I was in the oh Mount Carmel fucking yearbook my senior year. <laughs> someone yeah. find it. Wow. Oh, yeah, somebody find it. I never went to Mount Carmel. So were you? That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's sure what well, it, it made me. I if, do believe it actually. And could I have sued? Because in my head I was like, I, can I sue? Yeah. In high school. You could have come up big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bankrupt the whole school district. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, were you, Were your parents able to appreciate that you were became so successful that you kind of you turned it around, right? Because you took a very unlikely path to success. <laughs> Were they able to appreciate that? Are they able to appreciate that? Are Welcome to the H3 yeah, yeah. podcast. Welcome to H3. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can it it. No, I love, no, I'll get that. I, was, I like just making you feel uncomfortable. That's all. Yeah, it's yeah. a power band. Um, what was the question? <laughs> no, tell me. The I almost give me the question. Give me the question. Where, are your parents able to appreciate your success? Um, my parents... Um, well, you have to understand that you know when when you're you know you have parents that grew up in a different country. There's no stand-up comedy there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think my friend Danny Cho's out there right now trying to start up a movement, mm -hmm. but that's it's 2018 and they don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine you know my parents grew up in the Korean War as kids, mm -hmm. and they went to school there. And my dad was a street hustler, like he was in the military. Became, mm -hmm. but as a kid, he used to like. Thieve, and he used to mm. get in a lot of street fights. So he fights. had a rough. He had a rough one, yeah. Right. And then when he, you know, they didn't meet in Korea; they met here. Mm. And my dad um, stalked my mom pretty much. Damn. What do you yeah. leave like slabs That's of aggressive. steak? Yeah, he at her doorstep. She had to move out of L.A. and move to Wisconsin, and my dad followed her. She didn't know him mm. at the time. She did meet him and know him, and she didn't like him. Ooh. Whoa! Right, so persistent. He, he's very persistent. Stalked his way into a marriage. Yeah, <laughs> and then he showed up in Wisconsin with a steak. 
<laughs> what kind of steak? Yeah. It was probably like a what nice, kind of cut? Tr- nice cut. Nice. Like a cowboy Texas cut. Right. <laughs> right. T-bone. Yeah, and T-bone. she was like, in, I guess in Korea, that's a big deal. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like, uh, th- those are our diamonds. <laughs> <You've had> a- <laughs> <laughs> beef cuts. Meat, yeah, beef, yeah, beef cuts. Yeah. You've had an interesting road. Yeah. And then um, she was like, I don't think they, the violence, she saw, you know, you know, guys, they play that game. You know, I'm gonna beat this lady when I'm married. They do? Oh, no, yeah. We, yeah, all, yeah, played yeah, we, we game. all played that yeah. game. You know, classic no, game. Right. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. Classic <laughs> game. I'm well familiar with that. <laughs> right, Eli? Yeah, right, Eli? Pound yeah, it, yeah, pound it up. Pound it up. Yeah, yeah, classic. It up. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. classic game. <laughs> but oh. <laughs> she deceived, he deceived her. And then they had us, and he started drinking heavily. And then um, he would get on these like alcoholic rage episodes. And um, you know, my brother and I grew up. But you know what? Here's the thing. My also, my parents. My dad was fairly wealthy. He mm. had a bunch of like clothing stores. Mm. We grew up with um, summer camp. And when I turned sixteen, I got a car. You know, I mean, so there was a lot of things that I did get that was um, cool. You know. Do you have good parents? My parents are pretty normal. Yeah. I would say normal. Do you have siblings? I have two siblings. Are you the oldest? I'm the baby. Oh, you're the, mm-hmm. baby. Yeah, I'm the baby. I was coddled. I definitely had the best of the three. But I want to say I'm really impressed by your... I just want to say I think you're a survivor. <laughs> I want to tell I you think that. you're a survivor as really well. Good, you know? <laughs> Eli, what was your upbringing like? Um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> my parents... My dad is very, like, old school. So it's kind of hard. You can connect the dots on old school. <laughs> well, like, is, is, yeah. is old school mean he's a Hasidic Jew? No. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. you Just mean like, like old uh... school way of raising kids. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? A belt. The good old way. Mm-hmm. A belt. Not, it wasn't, it was never like aggressive towards me physically. Yeah. But it was always scary. Like, uh... like if you push him, it may go there. Mm-hmm. It right. didn't with yeah. me. It's... But. Um, and you played by the rules yeah you did because I was scared Uh, I'm still scared of him yeah well you know when she came here yeah she almost didn't come he almost talked her out of it really but she that's probably the closest he yelled her out of it hitting you it sounds like but I'm pretty sure he he did hit your siblings yeah it happened a couple times really yeah so was he just not was he disapproving of you or disapproving of you moving everything yeah and how old were you at that point 21 uh, 21 21 did, did, does he like him <clears throat> now your dad he, he does oh. you know in, as much as you can like someone he's very, <laughs> really that's a he's high compliment very... that's a high compliment so if you go to israel and you see her dad he smiles he does smile yeah. but you hug like, like yeah okay but he we've been but through they, um yeah they've been through been a lot through it. really <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, what is like story? arguments <laughs> Here's the interesting thing. Yeah. He doesn't speak English and I don't speak Hebrew. Mm. Which oh. is also a reason that he's mad at him for not learning Hebrew. Mm. Uh. But he's the kind of guy who's mad at everybody yeah. for something. His, his The family's been like, it's so good that you don't know Hebrew. Trust me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you don't want to know what's coming out. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. But like the funny thing is that when I came, Ela lived with me for a year in America and when her visa her travel visa expired I didn't have any other option it was either move to Israel or break up right yeah and because there's this whole weird thing about if you're Jewish you can just hightail to Israel and they give you citizenship oh. wow. and so I did that but the weird part was that I went and lived with her parents Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so it was very extreme for and, how long and uh, for we one were month. yeah we were we were like but um, he yeah. he didn't let us even sleep in the same room. That's old school. <laughs> we lived together for a year. We I lived was together moving for a year to be together, <laughs> and he made me sleep in a different room. How did you guys hook up? We, we was, found a way. There we, found, we found some quiet hours. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. were they quiet hours? <laughs> yeah. That kind they, of makes they, it they exciting. Better yeah, that's exciting. That's, that's exciting, exciting, exciting in the same way dry humping's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where that's it's exciting. like dry humping. You know what I mean? Oh, where yeah. it's like <laughs> you just go back to the basics, the beginning, that kind yeah. of restraint. It makes yeah. things a lot more interesting. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Now uh, it's like it's a it's a threat. Yeah. You don't. Well, the thing is, if I get caught, I'm fucking 
I am Dude, getting killed. Dead. And this guy is scary. I'm telling you, he's missing a finger. He's old school. Oh, oh yakuza. Yeah, old yakuza. Old school. Yeah, no yeah, finger. Yeah, yeah. Old yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did he do it through like some sort of combat, or was born without it? No, just from working with like heavy stuff. Machinery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the way. I've been to Israel. Do you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. When? What's the situation? What do you mean? Well, Why what were you, you doing there? there? I got a call from some sort of like what was it? Like the government. <laughs> they're like no, they're, no, it's like tourism or whatever, and okay. they go, "We fly um, celebrities out here, really, like to do like a free vacation or whatever." Yeah, you didn't have to work. They're just like, "Come on mm -mm. out." It's just to promote. So it was they the invited tourism. me, Steve Byrne, George Lopez, wow. like a bunch of us minorities, though. minorities. Yeah, so it's like minorities in PR. Yeah, in showbiz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I flew out there. And we did all the tours. We went to the fucking um the, the Dead Sea. Yeah. So cool, right? So great. I love it there. It's like <laughs> Did you, you go to a muddy float, beach? Yeah. The mud mm -hmm. is so nice. We went into it? the I I was in my mud in the mud like yeah. yeah. It's yeah. My, one of my I favorite. felt like your people. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, the Filipino people <laughs> live in mud. I was like, <laughs> live in mud huts. I was like, I agree with Why that statement. So and I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love everyone. You know, Why Koreans, so like, Koreans, dirty. although imperialized <laughs> yeah. by the Japanese at one point, now hold this very superior type of complex towards still? Filipinos. Yeah. Oh. Really? Yeah. All the, I, 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 I mean, the, the whole the whole dynamic between all the the Asian <laughs> countries is very strange. The, it the is. Chinese, the Japanese, the Koreans, the Phil they all have these weird little <laughs> opinions about each other. Yeah, oh, very oh. racist. They're very, very racist, racist towards each other. In it's fact, funny. I think the Filipinos are very racist towards Filipinos. I've heard Japanese are the worst, right? Uh, well, not historically, sure. yeah, <laughs> they fucked. They yeah. rape and pillage the Filipinos, mm -hmm. so we we have a, a we have a very similar history with the Japanese or sentiment like the Koreans do, because mm. they I think uh, around that time of World War II, the Japanese were really they awful. They were just to the raping yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. well, Thirteen I mean, year olds, I'm no friend to Emperor Hirohito. I'll tell you that. <laughs> let me start there. Yeah, let me start with this fucking sun god. <laughs> sun, uh, sun god. Yeah, you know, he convinced everyone he was a sun god. Yeah. Oh. Did you know good. that? No, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. That's Whoa. very persuasive. That, now talk about oh. power dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, I am the sun god. <laughs> oh, you are? If that's what he says. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah, by the way. And then he, um, although, you know, Americans, when they cry, it's a sneak attack, Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Right? They always, that's what they, they always say. It was a sneak attack. What, they were supposed to call in advance? Yeah. <laughs> it's called war. Yeah. Right? It's like, right. you know, Eurito was supposed to call Roosevelt. Hey, sun god, sun, sun god here. Sun god here. Sun god here. Uh, <laughs> by the way, how's the family? <laughs> anyway, tomorrow we're going to attack. Bye. I mean, what are they going <laughs> to yeah. No, they're going to sneak attack. So that was clever what they did. Yeah. You know? uh, a nice Pearl Harbor segue. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Did that sound like a bit? Because it wasn't. No, 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 no. Yeah, I felt whorish. No, but doing no, a bit just now. Yeah, yeah. Pearl Harbor is interesting. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't feel anything towards it, but it's like we have our own Pearl Harbor. Nine Eleven is our Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. Isn't that special? Um, it was similar in many ways. Correct. Well, but civilians, similar different. Similar civilians different. weren't. Here's the difference between Pearl True. Harbor and Nine Eleven. Yeah, that, is they attacked civilians. Yeah. And they used our own equip things against us, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and um, <laughs> it was just more devastating. I think nine eleven. Yeah, nine eleven was a it was a t it was the a worst. Doozy, wasn't it? It was a doozy. <laughs> it really was. It was a doozy. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a doozy. <laughs> Yeah, that's the word no, I, I was too young. Old school, too, old I school. Remember, <laughs> yeah. Boy, I think that's what Bush said. He's like, boy, that was a doozy. How old, how old were you when 9-11 I happened? was in high school. I don't remember my specific age, but or maybe I was even middle school. I didn't even, you know, comprehend what was going on. I was homesick. My brother's like, hey, an airplane just hit the World Trade Center. And I was like, oh, who fucking cares? You know, I was sleeping. It was like 8 a.m. Right. Then I get up and like the second one hits the tower. And I was so, when thinking back, I'm stricken by how un- I was really just didn't care about it. Like apathetic. Yeah, it was yeah. very apathetic. I just put on cartoons. Yeah, teenage. And went on with yeah. my day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean you're a kid though. Yeah, you're a kid. I mm -hmm. was a kid, but it's just it's it's yeah. It's For weird. me, I was working at Matt TV stuff. Uh, that, that oh, was young, wow. but still early. Did it affect you? Well, Andrew Daly, who was also on Matt TV, his cousin was on one of the flights. Wow. Oh. Right. So That's the worst. when I showed up to work, it was 
obvious like Andrew mm. wasn't there mm. for like a couple of weeks wow. mm. and um, it was pretty brutal man you know um, I remember going to the comedy store the next day and we had three comedy rooms open and in each comedy room there was a riot a riot people just fist fighting comic there was like Oh, like, really? Yeah, people just punched, beating the shit. I, I was like, well, wait, what was the conflict? The, the conflict was people were like, they did, you know, you know, when something bad happens in in the world, mm -hmm. right? And you go to the a comedy club, you can feel it mm -hmm. in the audience. You can feel it with mm -hmm. the performers. It's just not really a good sure. place to be because because like comedy. And it's an emotional place. Yeah, it's an emotional place, and you you get at somebody like. Who was I think one of the best comics in the country, which is a, this kid Rick Ingram, mm -hmm. or Ari Shafir, one of these types, and they will just say things right just to shock people or whatnot, mm -hmm. and it'll it, it it'll just ignite bad time for yeah, shock comedy. Yeah. It's a bad, very bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that night, I remember it was just so fucking awful there, ah. and mm -hmm. it was terrible. Um, but I enjoyed Israel a lot. You yeah. know, I went to the. Um, we got to cut in line. Mm -hmm. you oh, know they're just like, hey, don't worry about these guys. Yeah, like because we were at the like we would. You had a chaperone. We had we were like having dinner with like mayors and governors of like mm. districts and stuff. And so we went to see. So we were like, come. We were, we were doing this tour, and then we were in this room, and I lit a cigarette. Yeah. And I was smoking this, and they go, "Don't smoke here." <laughs> I go, "Why? It, this is where the twelfth supper. They had the last supper." Oh. Oh, they geez. did that. They, uh, now let they... me ask you something. How do they know that that's the place? I don't know. Where were you? Do you have remember? you heard of it? I I've I've never been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was somewhere in Israel. We were in a room. Like, this is where they had the Last Supper. Really? You're all smoking. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, how do you know? Th I was like arguing that with seems... them. I go, how the fuck do you know that though? Well, I know that there's there's a lot of like Jesus places there. Like yeah, Nazareth, yeah. and they're like. This then we is went where, where they they where they lynched him. I what do you call it? They got him. They got him. Where they got him. Crucified. And then I remember when. So they had the slab, what they the slab where they had Jesus' body. They had the Jesus slab. They had the slab there. Damn. And I remember Steve Jesus Byrne. The best Steve merch, Byrne, dude. the comic, <laughs> was on his hands and knees, touching the slab, crying, and I never laughed harder. <laughs> <laughs> I went into a cackle that no one's ever heard. I went. Gah! I went out of my mind, and I took photos of him was crying. He, was he offended? Yes, everyone in line was offended. Everyone oh, was there offended. was other people there. The whole... Yeah, it, there's a line that's like eight hours long just to well, get that, to the slab. I'm, I, I'm, the intrigued. I, I'm intrigued they took you to the Jesus spots. Did they take you to the Jew spots? No. They didn't take you to the Western Wall or anything? Yeah, they did that they did. too. Okay, yeah. that's, that's the Jew spot. I love that spot. With the little, they got the little the notes, notes in the wall. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. And it came true with the little note. I got a show, really? so you can tell me. <laughs> so you put, I want a network. TV I want to get show. on a network TV show. I stuck it in there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then we went into. Um, That's big of you to wish for. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That was a brave, bold, selfless wish. Thank you. <laughs> I thought so too, but it came true. It came true, and I thought so too. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I have to be honest. Sometimes yeah. it is brave to wish for yourself, because you always have this compelling of like, oh, I need to wish for. The, for Case something selfless, the world. but sometimes you gotta wish for yourself. I always wish for myself. Good for you. In fact, I don't think he's ever wished for anybody. <laughs> but do you know why? Do you know why I don't wish? I do. Mm. I do for other people. Right. I put that in action. Right. I wish for myself. No fucking notes. I don't do notes for other people. <laughs> Fuck that. I get into action. Yeah. All right. We have a little fucking. Uh, what is that? A sponsor. Oh, what is it for? Sparkle Hood? Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> What's Sparkle Hood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys, um, I literally and um, non-literally <laughs> use Brooklyn in, in my personal life. I use it on my sheets. But they're my sheets. They're my pillowcases. And it's my favorite product that I've ever used. You guys have to use it. Brooklinen.com, guys. If you guys take a look at any of our Instagram photos, if there's any a picture of a video of sheets, of, of sheets it's, it's Brooklyn, Brooklyn and sheets. okay? So check it out. Brooklyn and sheets are the best and most comfortable sheets they've ever slept on. Brooklyn.com has an exclusive offer just for Tiger Belly listeners. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use the promo code TigerBelly at Brooklyn.com. 
Brooklyn Inn is so confident that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all their sheets and comforters. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use the promo code TIGERBELLY at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo ow. code TIGERBELLY. Ow, ow. Brooklyn Inn, these are the best sheets ever. ever. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Brooklyn Inn. I love the name. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to get... Do you that guys have you have ads, right? Yeah. We got ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys uh, work, I haven't heard that one though. You guys work in such close proximity to each other, similar to us. Do you ever like get into it or fight and then have to like kind of restart or regroup? On the podcast. Oh, so Oh, okay. on the podcast? Yeah. Never on camera. Ooh. Yeah. Right? Like, like a real argument? No. Yeah, never the thing on is, the camera. Also, you, not really at the office cuz the podcast we do at the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so public. Yeah. yeah, you can't, you can't fuck there. So you just kind of bite so your tongue. Let's say, for mm -hmm. instance, like, what's your line? Like, what if he says something just so inflammatory? You just had to like bite your tongue and. Hmm. What's my thing? What is it? Have you ever had a thing, or you might not have had? A I thing. know that I can be really annoying. Let me think. I have, my thing is like, if I if I <laughs> do something annoying and I'm annoyed. Here, I know what it is. When I'm in a bad mood and I'm like really irritable, I'll blame her for every stupid thing. Like if I tub my, my yes. if I if I stub my toe on a chair, it's like, damn it, Eli, why did you leave that there? Yeah. Right? Ah. And, and I, it's like. And I get so upset. Yeah. Why oh, would yeah. you? Like, like what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Have you gotten in a fight where you've cried? Yeah. They've yeah. Been. Been yeah. together a long time. Yeah, we would hope that she would shut up here. I'll say, usually it's... I was going to say, when we when we do our videos, we do those at home, and it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, it happened that we would argue, and then yeah, we yeah. stop. That's and like, true. Okay, so that's argue. what happens with us often, too, because this isn't live. I feel like crying in an argument is unfair. It's cheating. Why? I feel like... <laughs> well, that's the real game like, ender, you know? I know. It's yeah. like, I feel like, you know, you can't, after that... You know, that's like, there's nothing that can, like, you know. It's a cheat. Well, it's, it's, the, a cheat it's a cheating card. move. It's not, you, you can't lose. control it. Oh, I cry You easy. control you it. <laughs> Restrain well, your emotions. Here's another thing that women do when they cry, when they get pulled over. It's like, that's a little unfair. Right. We don't have that. No. Well, why don't you try it? Try I bet it. you anything you can. It'd be the most pathetic. <laughs> He's like, yeah. sir. He's like, sir, yeah. hold on one sec. He leaves, comes yeah. back with a yeah. double the cost of the ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no one. he will call you a pussy. It's not cute. Yeah. He might shoot you. You should try it. Why crying? When you get pulled over. I can't over. cry. Have you cried when I you put the pull over? No, but I've panicked uh, yeah. so oh. bad that they let me. They let you go? Yeah. Oh, that's another good but thing. I, I was just like. <laughs> what did you, <laughs> what did yeah, you do? So I was just driving. It was in Israel. I was driving and I was holding my phone. Uh. And, and there they're very strict about like, you can't even look at your phone. It's like. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so weird out there. It's like, you know, when I was in Beirut, you know, sometimes there's like military there. And they're checking things. It's a little, it's much scarier th in Lebanon than in Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not as much in Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel's much more stable. But there was one day where, like, they, I didn't want to do a tour thing. I want to stay in the hotel at, in Israel. And I was like, um, I'm going to go eat. Mm -hmm. And I go, where, where's the meat? The, we don't do meat today. It was like some sort of holiday or something. Oh. Oh, or it must have some been, sort of meat or something. Well, so in kosher means you don't mix the milk. And are you are you not done with the story? No, I'm not done. One I'm, of these. I'm done. No, I'm done. Oh, okay, <laughs> I was doing this just to. Uh, I agree with you. Like, really <laughs> stop. No, no. <laughs> stop talking. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah, religious Jews are kosher. They don't mix meat and cheese. So oftentimes at restaurants they'll say today's a dairy day or today's a meat day. Uh, you don't get both. Ah, that's yeah. what it was. I think yeah. it's some cheese. But why don't they mix? It's just one of those it's weird things. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Oh, it's in the Bible. So no beef stroganoff? Do you guys eat shrimp? Stroganoff it's is, also has not cream kosher. in it or what? You can't they eat don't shrimp. stroganoff it. No no seafood, mm. like only fish. You can eat fish. You can eat fish but no shrimp, like no. lobster. No. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because they're bottom dwellers. Who knows? They've got all these no, weird That's Actually, there's something to that though. Because shrimp is the most like biologically costly thing to eat out of the ocean. You're actually is it? fucking up the ocean more no by kidding. eating shrimp. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a lot of people will guess that the reason was that it was, a lot of they say is unsanitary. That's what uh, it is about pork and stuff. And that's uh -huh. why they cut the dick off. You know, they circumcise because it's cleaner. Yeah. 
But they do stuff like religious Jews. They put their dick through a hole and fuck their wife that way too. And I don't know what's that Wait, all about. What? <laughs> well, they do glory hole. Yeah, they, they glory, glory hole their wife, glory. but religious they, glory holes. They, yeah. they put a sheet on and just a little hole for their cock, which is I. That's my fantasy to fuck like that. You don't have to see my like body. A ghost? <laughs> you want to be a ghost for Halloween? I'm like I don't. Have to see, I don't. Yeah. Have, you know. Well, if you did that, you could fuck me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I'll pretend it's Tom Hardy. Yeah. Here we go. Wait, what? Wait, go. they just fist bumped. <laughs> We're gonna fuck. We're gonna ghost fuck. We're gonna. I'm gonna glory hole. Can I? Can I? have a thing too but I wore the sheet like if you were to fuck me let me just say let me just, let's just say let's just, scenario I would go get to Brooklyn the sheet right <laughs> yeah Brooklyn Brooklyn, yeah, yeah. I Brooklyn right? I would put it on my body you would poke a hole in it mm-hmm. we'd do it beforehand probably mm-hmm. right I bend over I stick the sheet over the hole where my butthole is Oh, and then you would slip it in. No, what I would do is just put my dick through and then kind of do like a. Uh, put oh, the tail on the right. Make it a game. Yeah. We turn it into a little game. But why so would hold you... both, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. both of you have sheets then? What? Let's that's the extra safe. Yeah, let's yeah. have both yeah. But I think it's a You're very. It's more challenging. It's very difficult to line the asshole up. Yeah. <laughs> in that way. Uh-huh. When one of us needs to see. I prefer it's like skeet you. shooting. I prefer it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Why would you want to put a hole in that wonderful Brooklyn linen? Right, such a high quality product. Everyone's but why do they product. do it? Th- why do they do it that way? Why do they? Why would they? Did you explain that yet? Why they do it that Nobody way? Nobody knows. Why did they do? It? I forget. Nobody knows. It's some stupid. It's, yeah. It was some really brutally disgusting Jew. He's like, I got a nice cock, but I'm so nasty. Here's what we're gonna do: cover my body. My dick goes through the sheet. I don't. Nobody has to face my awful body. Wow. Mm. That's in the Bible. It is. Yeah. It's like when I heard like. And like men in like in the Muslim world when they fuck a man in the butthole that's not really is that gay is that something that's just considered gay so that's what it's I, just having a good time is this fact it is no really it, it, I, you know, I, Arab I saw men, a documentary or something on it you know Arab a whole men, hour well, like, like was minutes. it a pornography <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah was your oh, dick Muslim in your hand yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was on reality kings oh okay yeah, 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 yeah. I think okay, I saw cool. it on uh, love that documentary dot <laughs> Yeah. But you know, and the, the Arab guys are, they have a strange tendencies where they, it's not unusual to see two Arab men holding hands. Uh. They'll just walk around with their buddy and they hold hands. Oh. It's really strange stuff. But if they see a guy sucking a dick, they'll throw stones at him. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> would I, you and I be able to hold hands, you think, Gilbert? I can it, hold your hand. For how long? Long, but what will happen is that you'll be, you'll start realizing, oh my God, he's too comfortable. <laughs> then you'll try to take it up a notch. He was researching. You know what? Yeah. Did you find mm-hmm. out? I was trying to remember why the they put the hole in the shit. And oh. What you get? You get, what you get anything? I think it started from some story in the Bible where a guy um, had to, uh, what was it? Have sex with like this, uh, the wife of his brother or oh. something like that. Oh. So like to make it oh not. Like, oh, <laughs> I totally now, get that. Now it's fine. Yeah. It's fine it's, then. It's good. We're oh, good yeah. guys. I it's get that. But it's fine. Yeah. That. Why? Because his <laughs> so own wife torn. couldn't bear children? Something like that. Oh, that's actually oh, part of the handmaid's so, tale too. Yeah, so to oh. remove wait, wait, like explain any... Explain it to me. So Nick it's... Pilot. So okay, like hand- a, you and I, like in Handmaid's Tale. It's in Handmaid's Tale in, in Gilead. They <laughs> yeah. they repeat this phrase where they say like, when so and so couldn't bear his own or couldn't bear this guy's oh, um, children, right. his brother offered up the wife. Mm. And uh. then that's why the the premise of the Handmaid's Tale is that you technically give. So you know, it's your me. Body. Let's say in, let's say we were in the Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, and I offered you up to my brother Steve. No, that's not how it works. In in Gilead and Handmaid's Tale, they have desig- women who are designated just to bear children. Yes, they're captured, they're raped by their you know commanders basically. Yuck. And they're only they, that's all. They're just carriage basically. Uh, that's all their body is for. Wow. Mm. Um, and I think that that's that I reference right. is the same. I think mm-hmm. we saw. I think we cracked the uh, nugget on that it's, one. It's, it's you know it's you know it's like. Yeah. The, the worst thing about when I watch movies, I can't do rape scenes. You're sensitive mm-hmm. to it. I'm very. I don't know why. But Is I'm it just, because of your own experience? Or I don't know. I've never thought. It? I've never really thought it through. Look, but, don't watch well, it's not, it. It's all rape. Yeah, yeah I can't it's watch not it. a pleasant. You know. But you I, ever, I, I ever, can yeah. see pillaging. <laughs> right. You can burn things down. I don't give a fuck. One of right? the worst <laughs> things yeah. is watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you can yeah. kill. I don't care in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. But when it's rape, I have to either like. There's this movie called Irreversible. And there's like a 10 minute rape scene in a, in a tunnel. It's so believable. Like, I haven't seen it, but I think I've heard of it. You've heard of it, yeah. yeah. It's like literally a, a 10 minute rape scene and literally like you watch just a mi- second of it, mm. I just turn it off and I walk away, I hate it. 
Mm. I jerk off, but sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. you, gotta, yeah, you gotta get your nuts. Ski, no matter what. Ski shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, there's something about rape, rape scenes or rape in general that I find appalling. I don't know. I've, I don't know how many rape scenes I've seen in movies. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Oh, who was mm. raped in Game of Thrones? Khaleesi was. Khaleesi was. Khaleesi was raped. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, also the girl was raped by Ramsay, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's, oh, yeah. There's, a yeah. Of, there's a lot. There's of a lot of rape. Wasn't that a, that was one of those interesting rape scenes where she she get she's in she gets into it, Khaleesi. She eventually. Oh, she eventually. Yeah. I think that she was she started to fall in love with the possibility of having power, mm. and oh, that yeah. kind of overrode her mm. like disdain for the guy who raped her, right. or. Maybe she understood it from a way of like just the Dothraki, mm-hmm. this being some like cultural thing rather than him really being yeah. like this rapist. Right. Mm-hmm. It wasn't right. coming it from was like a, a different culture. Yeah. Right. You, you take on a wife and that's what you did yeah. mm-hmm. against her will. I'm going to kind of ask a question. Do yeah. you think rape is only shocking now? <laughs> I mean, it's probably been shocking all throughout <laughs> the history of mankind. But if it was prevalent, Five or six hundred years ago, when there was, right mm-hmm. when it just happened, when people like armies would go or, or soldiers would go into a village and rape and pillage, right? It's just a part of, you know. You oh, think it was more shocking horrifying. then, or yeah, you think it was always horrifying? It was horrifying. Like you hear about the like, the Mon- the Mongols, they used to just fucking rape everybody. But yeah, it's awful. It was yeah. awful then. What I think about is like if you go back to like caveman days. Yeah. Do animals rape like monkeys and gorillas and stuff? Because you know the male penis is is made like a pump, so that you fuck and you suck the, all the jizz out, so that your jizz can get in. I swear it's to God, it's that's worst. why you got that head because yeah. it sucks out the jizz. Really? As if wait wait wait, <laughs> what jizz? Well, say Sci- there's science alert. I, I, science, I, I, science alert. Science, science alert. alert. Yeah, yeah, in this, in this, in the, I love in this scenario, there's rape is so prevalent that it's just like sucking out the other guy's jizz. This is a bad image. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, I see what you're saying. But this, what the, you're saying you is, you suck out the juice because the penis head is like a pump. Right. It goes. No, 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 you're saying if, if, so. Let's okay. Let's say you and I were gonna we're raping. We're raping a village. Humans have raped enough that our dicks have evolved to suck other people's jizz out of the vagina. Oh my god! Like that's really? right. That's well, crazy. Well, that's what the penis head is. It sucks out. I Did swear you to God. Just make that no, up. I swear or to God. I've never heard that out loud from a human mouth. I swear really? to God. But another really? theory is that villages back when we were hunter gatherers, they would all fuck way more. Uh, monogamy wasn't a thing where you would have a village of people and and a bunch of dudes would have sex with a woman and they would all raise the child together. Mm-hmm. So bio- biologically, you were competing with all these other guys. You were all having sex. But you didn't care about whose child it was. Mm. It was the it was the village's child. Whoa! That they used to do it then, like yeah. that when they were hunter get when we when were, were hunter gatherers. gatherers. Yeah. Would you have been a ga- I would have been a gatherer. <laughs> yeah, I would have been. A gatherer. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'd be picking berries. <laughs> I'd be weaving baskets. I'd be looking for roots. I'm a basket guy. <laughs> roots. <laughs> I'd be like clogs or whatever. <laughs> and they'd be like, gathering. "Hey, we're gonna go yeah. hide hunt bi- bison." I'd be like, yeah, "Go ahead, I'm gonna finish with this basket." <laughs> yeah, right. I dream of being a gatherer to this day. Yeah. Me too. I, I wish I, I could get I would go hunt. Well, you would, you're a hunter. I would hunt yeah. too. You're a hunter? Really? Yeah. yeah. How about you, Gil? I'm going to pick berries. Yeah, I'm pick, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll pick very good berries. Okay. Very good berries. This is very progressive gender role. <laughs> I have to say I'm very no, just, I'm just not, you know, this No, thing. I know I'm not, I'm not picking up a spear. Yeah. I'm not doing any of that. Also, can I just say this out loud? I never said this out loud. Uh-oh. I'm not a hero. I'm a coward. I don't I say that. About <laughs> yeah. I says, Ela, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm just a coward. If I ever got drafted to war, I'll tell you right now, I'll, I will go to prison. Not because I'm a, some great conscientious objector. I'm yeah. just a coward. Or I'll go to. I just know, like, if they said you're dra- drafting, drafting you, I would just tell everyone, okay, guys, uh, that means I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will say my goodbyes. Would you be a draft dodger then? No, I will I go. I'll just, just go? die. Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna tell everyone. I'll call George. Hey, I'm going to the war, so I'm, di- I'm gonna die. Like 100. percent That's not even. But you a- would be. You would be. Con- or you would just be like, that's what's happening. Yeah, I would just go. You I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna die, and that's how. Do I'm you know die. how fortunate? I feel like the fact that we belong to a generation that never got drafted for war yeah. is one of the greatest treats of all generations to ever exist on this whole planet in human history. Wow, that's interesting. That we that never had that. to fight a war. Yeah, I mean, well, that's true. people who are fighting wars volunteer for it. Exactly. Now, volunteer. I mean, these are imagine all, these, when they in used this them country. for. Yeah. 
You had to uh, yeah. serve in the military, yeah, right? Two yeah. years? He almost did, too, in Israel, but oh, he got wow. out of it. <laughs> in Korea, they have it. You have yeah. to serve like two or three years, two right? Years. Mm-hmm. But in Israel, you, they're like, well, you, yeah, people, it gets a little hairy over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you actually see Hold combat on. when you did it? Uh, no, only, only once because I wanted to. I asked them to take me with them. Yeah, she's a hunter. They hunter. shot at her. Uh, yeah, they shot at you? And yeah. Oh my, my. How was, were you scared? I, it was pretty weird. Yeah. Were you, uh, we, uh, were, we were in a jeep. She was in an armored jeep. Driving. Oh my God. Driving with some high level a, commanders. In a, like a really risky area. Yeah. And then there was like a. Right oh, here. Oh. No. Right. Oh, no. It hit the jeep right next oh, to my, my god, ear. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And did you smile like you're smiling now? Or uh, <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> yeah. I think I did. Well, did you? Were you did you? Were, I mean, what did, what do you do? I mean, do you? You crowd? You sit that? <laughs> That's so funny. If we cut in the past and we saw that and she was doing that, that would be the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. You know, when I went to Israel, they took us to a board, like where the people with the UN, whatever, the hats, what do they call them? What, the Hasids? No, there was like um, the people that are, they wear the blue hats or something. The blue religious hats. Jews? No, they're like UN. Um, UN? Yeah. UN? Oh. In Israel. Not UN, not UN. Um, what is it a religious thing? What is it? Who are they? No, they're, white helmets. no there were people those. that um, were Israeli, but they were just guarding the border or something. Okay. And we went to this area, and you could, from the distance, hear machine guns and things mm-hmm. being blown up. Yeah, wow. I mean, that's just the closest. Yeah, I got that's to Israel's crazy. crazy. When I was there, there was like for about a month, there was daily rockets coming in from Gaza, and we were living in Tel Aviv, and fucking air sirens going out. Off. Yeah, it and was you have the, to take cover. It was really unusual because usually the they they didn't reach Tel Aviv before. It was mm. the first time they reached Tel Aviv. Oh my god! Yeah. So it was unusual for people in Tel Aviv to experience it, that it was weird it was can weird, I, it was weird. I, I don't know much about it but can i just ask a question mm-hmm. can't you just split up jerusalem 50 50 it is already split up 50 <laughs> 50 i don't know Actually, if it's 50 50 but it, it's, well for example the old is city which is the really the part that everyone's fighting over well i don't want to say that but everybody's really obsessed with the old city, which is the biblical part of the city. Mm-hmm. And that is cut up into perfect quarters from after World War II with like mm-hmm. the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims. And Ooh. there's another group that I mean, like the Genonites or some weird one that nobody really. <laughs> wow. They just got hooked know. up. So that's what. So they it is split up like yeah. by groups. E, e, uh, uh, East Jerusalem, you don't. That's that's air. That's all Arabic. There's a ah. lot of there's a lot of places where you see everyone coexisting. Well, but right. the the problem is the extremes on mm. both sides. Mm. The the Orthodox Jewish people and cause extreme, trouble. Yeah. And the terrorists. Terrorists. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, know who do all the terror attacks on the other side, they yeah. cause the trouble. Yeah. But I feel like if you ask most people, especially my age, they'll be like, just do whatever it takes. Just they don't fucking do care. It. Split They're, it. Do you know. the two kind two state solution. Yeah. Do whatever it takes. I mean, right. there was a cab driver in in Beirut who had a fucking tattoo of Hitler on his stomach. Really? So I that's, have to say it was so fucking nice. shocking. Amongst the Arab world, huh. anti-Semitism is very real. Yeah, but I'm not gonna say if it's warranted. I don't know. They fucking always hated the Jews. They always. I don't. I don't know, but like we're not going to solve the problem. Yeah, here. we're not solving I'll tell you that right now. But um, but you that know doesn't what? surprise me. It's good to just to kind of talk about it yeah. because it it is um, it's it remains to be one of the just um, dilemmas of the world that mm-hmm. we have to deal with, mm-hmm. and it may never be resolved. It doesn't sound like it will ever be resolved. I don't think it will. Ever you know, the closest resolved. we ever got, we had this. Uh, what was his name? The the Israeli prime minister. The one who got shot, yeah, yeah. Uh, Robin. Robin, was that his name? <laughs> there was this guy, he was really close to achieving peace with the Palestinians. And get, and who killed him? A, uh, a, a Jew. A Jewish guy. A fundamental Jew <sighs> who thought, fuck these guys, let's not make peace, and he took them out. Mm. It's not as if they're making money, or there's no money tied to it. It really is, you know, strictly about God, the right? Religious. Yeah, the religion. The religion. Well, the, yeah. the Palestinians are definitely being fucked by everybody. Like they, are, that's got to be one of the worst places to live in the whole world. Is yeah. Gaza specifically? Yeah. Gaza, Gaza specifically, yeah. yeah. And and the thing about Gaza is that like Egypt's got the border closed, Israel's got the border closed, and 
Israel, despite having given up like autonomy, whatever, they still control. They still control it. Yeah. They regularly go in there and kill terrorists. They control the water and the power and all this shit. Wow. So is there a McDonald's there? In Gaza? Possibly. I think there might be. Like a be. Starbucks? Like if I was there, could I go to a Starbucks? You might. The, some of the images I've seen are strikingly civilized. Wow. But it's still fucked. Because you've got like... How many people there? I don't know the exact number, but it's it's the most dense place in the world. Mm. Wow. It's just packed. Unemployment's like 50%. Wow. But the, a lot of the, drug the, problems. The, re the regular people there are... I mean, everyone feels bad for them, even on you know the Jewish side. Oh yeah. And they're just. What can you do? They they're just because stuck there. Hamas is like. And, yeah. There's videos of like people celebrating a wedding in Gaza, and then Hamas rolls up and is like, "No celebrating," and fucking shut. Like, their Hamas is insane. Insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then people try to give money to Gaza, and the government empowers Hamas, and they take the money and they use yeah. it to build weapons. Mm -hmm. So it's oh, like you're fucked. God. They're it's really fucked on on all sides. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one of those sad things that you just, you know, I, you know, I think about it sometimes and I just go, there is no solution. And that makes me even sadder, really, to be honest with you. <sighs> what are we going to do? I mean, I don't know where. No, I lived there for. Look at Look at Look at Look at what. You think I did that? <laughs> you, think I, I, you think I brought this conversation into this area? No, I'm fully a thousand percent interested. Yeah. I'm. <clears throat> Part of the reason I left is because I was like, this is too much. Like, it's so. Like, just having. Just living there and being on YouTube is just so polarizing to people yeah like when, like honestly when we started doing youtube we hid the fact that we were in israel oh, oh. because we just were like we didn't want oh so you being. started h3 in israel yeah mm. no oh. the podcast no 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 Not the podcast has been around for like a year oh yeah. the vi you but guys we've been making videos for like five years yeah. wow what kind of videos would you make is it like like a podcast or was it sketches and stuff sketches comedy oh cool shit mm. like that oh yeah. wow so we had like I remember we would like cover Hebrew writing mm. and wow. shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were just like, oh, I don't want people to know. Just because we didn't want to necessarily be. We don't want to be about that. About that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. wanted it to, you know, not be boxed into this like, oh, you support Israel. Not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because and, 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 and it's so complicated. To a lot of people, I have a good friend who is uh, Lebanese, and to him, the simple, even the simple fact that I went to Israel to live with my wife. Is enough to make for him to have disassociated with me. Wow. wow! And it's like, dude, I'm not going there for political reasons. I'm literally going there to be with my wife because I don't have an option. Yeah, that to him is like, wow, that's heavy enough to disassociate with me. Yeah, and also you're a and coward, also, like I am. I'm a coward, bro. Yeah, I'm not yeah, fucking yeah. shooting. Yeah. He also couldn't come to our wedding because he's he was like my closest really? friend, and he was in Lebanon, which is just you know so close to yeah, yeah it really yeah, is so yeah. close. Oh, you guys got married in Israel? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, we had to. Yeah. For the green for that green card. It's so funny because <laughs> it's like you know aside from like uh, uh, the religious <laughs> stuff and you know whatever. I'm Korean. She's Filipino. What do you? He's a. He grew up in a really weird Christian religion. What was it called? Seventh-day Seventh Adventist. Seventh Adventist. Seventh Adventist. Seventh Adventist. Seventh Which one Adventist. is that? That's a weird one, right? Oh uh, yeah, we uh, worship on the seventh day, follow kosher rules, hmm. a lot of vegetarian. Oh no, yeah. weird, no, no weird like sexual stuff. Oh no. God bless. It's just they're not allowed. To, <laughs> they're not allowed to dance though. Yeah. They're not no, like, dancing. Yeah. Footloose. Do you dance yeah. now? Are you still basically. part? Are you yeah, still yeah. religious? No. Do you, do you enjoy dancing now more than like most? Only to reggae. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Reggae. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Bryce, Bryce grew up with it too, right? Yeah. yeah Seventh yeah. day at Aventus. Oh. God bless. You guys are good old boys, right? Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good old they are boy. good old boys. Mm. But, he, but listen, like, look, like, listen to this. This is incredible. Yes, we got these freaks, right? We got this freak. We got, mm. you know, you, we got, right? We're mm. all from different parts of everywhere right mm -hmm. yeah. different ideologies and if we don't think about that and we're just around each other and we're just talking mm -hmm. we're just we're just regular yeah. human beings yeah. to, can, and, 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 why the yeah no and, and, why it's, why it's the, so it, it's really frustrating because like the way i always thought about it is like i'm just i was just born here right. i yeah. i, I right. don't care like i don't know the history and i don't care we're mm -hmm. all like, just people here yeah People and now give, I have to choose sides, and I have to. Mm -hmm. that's like, the, and I'm saying that's why the reason I left is because like I'm like this isn't my fight, and Ela I think since before she knew thought it wasn't her fight. She never belonged there, and it's like I don't really want to be involved in in this because when you live in Israel, you start to learn things 
or maybe you're i don't know if it's a brainwashing thing or you're just you're with the the club right you're with right. that tribe mm-hmm. yeah so it gets through to you yeah so before i went to israel i was very pro-palestinian because i went to a very liberal college I went to uc santa cruz and there it's like they literally have protests on the campus of like israeli sh- soldiers executing palestinians wow. and i was like okay yeah that's totally what it is Mm -hmm. (laughs) but when you go there and then you learn because you spend time with that tribe and you understand all their talking points and shit and it's it's just so confusing dude yeah i mean i got even by go visiting doing this tourist thing Mm -hmm. i posted a couple of photos Mm -hmm. because that was a part of the deal Mm -hmm. and the backlash of me just going (laughs) was insane yeah Yeah. right it's propaganda i can't believe you took chose sides I go. I just wanted a free trip to the Dead Sea, man. <laughs> but you're. I wanted like, to float on the on the sea without yeah. any fucking effort. Yeah. <laughs> the salt, the salt, so heavily salty, you just float. But it's so. I hate that because it's so counterproductive. It's like, how are we going to make progress if you're telling people you can't even go there and talk to them? Because you go there and you talk to them, you learn about them, you learn what you know. What's an interesting perspective. Yeah. It's like, what am I just supposed to shut out that whole part and just take your word for it? Yeah. Like, what the mm-hmm. fuck do you know? Yeah. It's crazy. It really is crazy. But um but we're here. Yeah. We're now you know, when when yeah. e- Eli's brother lives here. <laughs> Eli's brother is Israeli. And he said to us just the other day, he's like, I meet Palestinians here all the fucking time and we love each other. We always get along here. Yeah. It's yeah. just over there that we all hate each other. It's mm. crazy. I have a friend, I have several friends that are Muslim mm-hmm. and it never comes up. I never talk about it. Mm-hmm. You don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're just loving people. I know so many Jewish people. They're just the most nicest, loving mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and then when you hear about this conflict, it just boggles the fucking mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, you know, I'm not a part of it. I'm just observing, but I'm a part of humanity and a part of the human race. Mm-hmm. And I just want, you know, what Rodney King said. I forgot what he said. You remember the spirit of what he said. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot what he said. Something about, <laughs> but he said something about having a dream. people and stuff. People, yeah, people right? are great. And, people and are great. People, yeah, people are great. I love people. That's what he, he said. said. Yeah. People are great and I love people. people yeah. Right. Love it. And if we just abided by what yeah. that guy, that black guy said. Remember him. Right. Remember that sweet right. man. And you know, when people say um, Rodney King was what sparked the riots, mm-hmm. it really hurts me. Okay, because there was many things that sparked the riots, mm-hmm. okay. including that Korean lady that Korean who lady. shot that black girl, yeah, yeah, that sixteen-year-old yeah. mm-hmm. black girl. That's what I here's. I, can just, I want to say something about Koreans. All right, <laughs> I know I make fun of the the Filipinos a lot mm-hmm. and other goop places, right? But I want to <laughs> to be to be uh, sensitive you, about it. Yeah, <laughs> tell you, tell you, yeah. Be, I want to tell you about Koreans, man. Right. <laughs> they can be bastards. Well. Right. And what that lady did, right? Shooting that young uh, teenage African American girl mm-hmm. for over nothing, right? Mm-hmm. It's a shame on Koreans, and it, and and it's something that we have to correct ourselves as well. Mm. Race. Do you okay. think that it was a race thing with the Korean lady? Yes. That's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like you you're gonna open up <clears throat> liquor stores in impoverished areas to take it. You know, it's a drug basically. You're a drug. Dealer. They're taking advantage of. You're taking of what's advantage going on of. There. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're, you're selling them alcohol mm-hmm. right which is a drug right so you're a drug dealer mm-hmm. and i understand you want to make money but it's mm-hmm. like um you know i get it from the other side too definitely right? i totally get it and you know what people are allowed to browse <laughs> <laughs> you mean what does that mean like steal? no i know they get no like when people come in like when walk around people yeah. walk oh around, you're allowed to browse sure. they, they say no browsing <laughs> oh, they say <laughs> that yeah yeah just like that too. Why you <laughs> they're supposed to decide more by you know what else they say you touch you buy I you look you buy i can't yeah you i can't look at the ingredients the calories or the yeah. calorie count <laughs> fuck not wow right so I guess. fuck you koreans let, right. let them let browse them know. let them know let them touch them browse. let them know touch them. yeah let them know <laughs> And if they steal, We're you can here. shoot them. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. You can steal. Let them steal. Let them steal. Don't Korean shoot. Yeah, don't shoot. Call the enforcement. Yeah. I, I played a lot of StarCraft too, and I learned a lot about Korean culture. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like huge there. Like game, esports mm-hmm. and gaming is huge yeah, there. Yeah. And it seems like a real, really strict, really tight, tough, tough people. It, it, there was a Korean lady that was, I just saw this on, I, on Instagram, a Korean lady who disappeared. Okay. She was missing for 10 years. Mm. You know where they found her? Where? 
in a gaming cafe. Just sitting there? That is sitting tough. there for 10 years playing <laughs> a game. Wow. She got oh. so addicted that she decided to just cut everything off. That's right? real? Yeah. Huh? Huh? You see that other documentary about we saw it on HBO about the Japanese couple who had a baby? I think I've heard of Right? They had a baby, yeah. right? But the baby died because they didn't feed it for 10 days. They because were they, were in a, they, they were, were gaming hard. They were in a raid. No right? They were in a 40-man raid. Get yeah, real. and then guess feed what? Yourself. They didn't go to prison, what? and guess what? They had another baby. What? Right? <sighs> But the ga they, gaming is prison, fun, though. I guess. So. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, that's moral of the story. Moral of the story. It, 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 gaming is fun. fun. It's a big, it's very a really big problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Korea. It is a problem. Yeah. I pl that's all I do. Yeah. I could have been way really? bigger than this than I am. Without you know what? I'm gonna fucking die someday. You're gonna die you're too. Gonna, and I'm, you're gonna and, die and too. And I'm happy to hear you're enjoying your. your hey, you're life. gonna die too, Ethan. Because you can work so fucking hard, and yeah. you cannot spend any time playing video games. Yeah. And you're gonna die. And at least you've spent some time enjoying can I what you, you love. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You, you and I, we're probably not gonna see each other after this again, huh? I kind of, I hope that's not true. I know, but I just have a feeling that but we the, won't but the, for a while. But chances are that. But I, I want to say this. That I'll probably, I'll probably, I'd like to have you back on our podcast sometime. Not only that, but it, it, can you invite us to like a barbecue or a party or something? <laughs> yeah. No, strictly professional. No, what I'm saying. Do you is want? That, it, would you come if no, I invited you? No, I just you? think that if we weren't like we, you know, if we weren't in this podcasting thing. And we know we're busy with our own private lives. But if you and I were like, we lived in Indiana, let's just mm. say we lived in uh, Muncie, <laughs> right? And we, lived, we, and we worked at some sort of lumbering place, oh. right? Okay. And you and I didn't podcast at all. And you were still a Jew, and I was still Korean, right? Why would that change? It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? We're just ourselves. We are who we are. We, who we are, what yeah. we are, right? Yeah. Yeah. That you and I, after work, we'd be like, hey, you want to get some brewskis? Yeah. Uh, and, then, and you'd be like, all right. No, I think, I think we're cut from the same block. Yeah, right. so, but I think in, because we are who we are, that we're not going to come. Do you guys want to have a barbecue sometime? No. Yeah, so why, why yeah, do you yeah, make yeah, me yeah. feel bad? <laughs> You're like, wow, invite me to a barbecue. I just want the invite. Why don't you come yeah, yeah, yeah. and have a barbecue sometime? Yeah, yeah, we'd love to. We really he would. He has, he doesn't like leaving the house ever. Yeah. So I guess we've right. had some great say, invites. But... Okay, I'll toss an invite your way. Mm -hmm. We just okay. moved to a new house. We got a pool. We got a spa. Oh. We got a if you barbecue. Have, if you have, if it's just us it, two. I heat it. It'd be weird. <laughs> but if you, need, you had like, buffer. you know what? We need, <laughs> need buffer. Yeah, we have 60 people coming. I guarantee you we'll go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 60? 60? 60 people. That's, That's what lot. you need to be comfortable around me. Thirty, yeah. whatever. You know? Thirty is a, still a ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that. thirty. You can do thirty. You're a YouTube star. Come on, man. I can, I can do ten. You can yeah, do ten. Yeah, we don't do ten. Who are no, the I don't ten? Who are, ten <laughs> <laughs> who are the ten though? Do you know the ten already? Mom, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are we doing time wise? We're over an hour. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have good guests, it, it the time flies. Does it not? <laughs> doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Time. There have been many times I've done this podcast. I go, where are we at? Where we've done fifteen minutes. Really. Do you cut it out when you ask? Uh, no. we, you don't we leave that. it in. Because sometimes that's like. Can, Do they feel bad? Yeah, it can be like it's a become vibe. A, like become a thing now. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's a thing. I always have to know. But the guest doesn't necessarily know it's a thing. So you're like, what time is it? Yeah. Yeah. 50 well, I mean, minutes. I, I, only 50 I, I, minutes in. <laughs> oh, I've done that with guests, and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we gotta do forty-five more minutes. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So you you guys do generally do about an hour, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, he can just, he can sense it. Yeah. But I can also, sense like, an hour. Yeah. I think that's just how my incrementally I work well in like 40, 50 minutes. Mm. Past that, I start to I blur out. I'm the same. Yeah. yeah. And we, like, our last episode went on for three hours. Oof. Oh, Oof. shit. And for me, that's like a nightmare. It was bad. Yeah. He like, kept DMing me, wrap it up, wrap it up. Who, who are you with? Who's and he doesn't read it. It was just us that week. Oh, my God. Just you two <laughs> did three hours? How do you do three hours? Just you. Exactly. I, I, I we do a lot, We did a lot of work prepping the show. Ah, oh. yeah, I don't do prep. any work, but I like it's a different vibe and it's good in a different way. When you just come in and have the conversation be natural, it's yeah. different and it's, it's better and it's yeah. better in a different way. We keep yeah. changing it. Sometimes we do yeah. that, like no planning, mm -hmm. and this time we tried like I don't know more planning. Yeah, but yeah, we don't work wait. well when we plan. We don't. Yeah, we can't. He loves. He thrives mm -hmm. off of the chaotic nature of mm -hmm. like, or even the pressure of. You know, not knowing no what the air. fuck we're gonna talk about. Although we have plenty we have times we've had to pause and where he his he hasn't slept in two days, so there's nothing <sighs> coming coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
But the thing is, is this though, is, is that I don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. Because even when it's like chaotic and like it's weird and I go this, people love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. It's organic. Right? It's no, they real. like the rawness. That's what we discovered when we stopped editing it. But yeah. you guys don't. Let me ask you this: though. Did you think that this is a good one or a bad one? I enjoyed my time here. I thought this. Was no, great. what did you think? I had fun. Yeah, did you think great. it's entertaining for people? I think because that... I'm going to tell you this right now: it's yeah. really good. Really? I'll tell you what I thought. <laughs> like answers is on fire. Power shift. Power shift. <laughs> I'll tell you. I thought, and just like when you came on our podcast, that we have a wonderful natural dialogue. You're a very funny guy. You're quick. And um, but sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm. Not, sometimes I don't even know what I'm saying. We had a very beautiful. We had a wonderful natural conversation. Yeah, I know we're natural. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was great. But you and I are natural. If we were in Nebraska, we totally no, no, know, Indiana, Muncie, Muncie, man. If we were in Muncie, I totally, I totally, I totally yeah. cut a hole. But in, in LA, and, no, 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 nothing. But cliffs. I can, I can already imagine the the lumberyard. It's called cliffs. Cliff's wow. Lumberyard, right, right? right? And it's got a red awning. Right. The wow. building does, right? And it's got some sort of weird, like, um, a mill on the logo as mm. a logo. Mm. This is Cliff's, it's right? It's like a fantasy almost. Yeah, and point. Cliff had, I already can imagine it. Cliff is dead. <laughs> but, his, but his kids run. Legacy oh. lives on. His legacy run lives on. And yeah. what do we do? We just hang out there and have a couple. No, we saw but, things. <laughs> oh, so we yeah, worked we there. there at the lumberyard. Uh, we saw. We're, we, but we're gatherers. We're not sawers. Mm -mm. No, we. There, no, oh, the, you know, in, in modern day sawing, <laughs> I don't know this. But well, you still have to be cool. You have to wear goggles. You have it to. It doesn't be matter. Like we press fucking, buttons. Yeah, we press buttons. <laughs> <It's a lot laughs> and then when the siren goes off, you and I run away. Right. And then you know what I mean. What's Damien, the name of the place? Damien Cliff. Cliff. Damien got his arm chopped off, mm -hmm. and we, you and I ran away, and we got fired. Right. And then we went to we got some brewskis. What's the brand of the brewski? Um. It's a local brand called it's, Willie's. Uh, oh, yeah, love yeah. It. Willie's and Cliff. Yeah, Willie's. <laughs> it's a local. Willie, yeah, yeah. Willie. Yeah. Willie's yeah. beer. We love Willie Draft House and beer. In, in all, <laughs> in a, draft House. Because that's what the college place we go to. Yeah. Yeah. Willie's Draft House. In an alternate <laughs> universe, this is a beautiful, loving friendship we have. Right. And then you, you go, hey, I got some sheets at my house. And we're a little drunk. Like, have you and read, I, go, I was like, have what? you read the Bible? So what's, yeah. Have you read, have you read the Bible? Have <laughs> you read the Old Testament? Yeah, yeah. I've There's never this read one it. story here. It's really interesting. Really? They cut a hole and you put his dick through. Oh, yeah? What do you think about that story? I don't know, but I'll go to your house. I like sheets. <laughs> Let's go have a beer at my house. All right, so I go to the house or whatever. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I pull I'm up, naked. I pull up the sheet. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, this is a really nice sheet. <laughs> Brooklyn linen or something. <laughs> I hate to do this to it. And I really love these gray sheets, but I'm going to cut a hole in it. Yeah, yeah. It's just perfect size for my hole. Really and then what happens the next day is we don't talk to each other ever again. No. It ruins and the And you move then to we, LA. Then we meet yeah, in LA, LA, do a yeah. podcast together. <laughs> <laughs> what if they Googled it and that was the, our, our history? That'd be so sad. Yeah. So at the end of our little thing here that we do, um, you two, is, is that we do a thing called unhelpful advice. And, you know, we... You know, people email us and we try to give them either mm, I love that. helpful or unhelpful I want to steal that bit. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> can but, I steal that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a bit like that in yours? Well, we have voicemails where people call in and leave a voicemail and we, and we play it. But we get, I feel like we. I want to do that too. We don't, we don't. Uh, <laughs> we just call people. We actually call people. You actually call on people. Live, yeah. yeah we oh, are you, always well, a Not live. now, but we have. They never pick up. Okay, yeah. so that's what I think. I feel like whenever we take live calls, it's kind of always a disaster. So it was like, hey, what's your favorite color? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, click. He just leaves voicemails for people. Mm -hmm. kind of that's funny. interested. Yeah. I mean, now, are you, would you, if like a network, like, would you be a talk show host, do you think, or no? Like we've actually been having the opportunity to make our own show. Yeah. But we passed. Hmm. Why? Because I think that we are probably better off like managing ourselves. Mm. Uh, I get that. Well, it's we so felt unready to. Like, and and honestly, I'm not I'm not a good writer. I'm not I think I it was scary. It was scary. No, you would have a staff, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So you would come in and go, I'm good at like people throwing me ideas and go, no. Yeah. yeah I like yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not d dumb. I know what would, what my muscles are in mm -hmm. comedy. I'm not that much of a writer either. I mean, mm -hmm. I've written things before, mm -hmm. but um, I would have, you know, three or four really funny, you know, creative guys. Mm -hmm. And the th But the thing is, is that I should think more like you do than the way I think about it. Because the thing is, is that a lot of times I go out, you know, well, I'll go to a comedy club or I'll even go to a cafe or wherever it might be. And people will walk up and go, Tiger Belly. And they'd say, Nosotros Papaya or 
things I say on the thing mm. or you know, the, George has a pink dick. That's a thing that we do because he has a pink dick. Really? Yeah. And or like, have you, you seen know, it? Yes, we've all seen. Yeah, You've all seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. What was that night like? Well, it's it's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, a tasteful night. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. A nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want to see his dick. Right. Never did. Never you know, did. It was he was intrusive. doing one of those jumping in the beach photos, and that's it um, fell out. No, 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 it was no, an intentional. No, no. It was a showcase. Yeah, it was a showcase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, is that I should look at it, look at it more Seven like Seventh Day you Adventist, do. you know? Because yeah. you, you look at your show, H3, as the actual thing, right? It's the thing, like, I've arrived. This is No, the... I don't feel that. I'm so confused about what I do, if I'm being honest. I, I'm perpetually unhappy and, and unsatisfied with it. <laughs> it's so funny because a couple of days ago, I get a call from Chris D'Elia. Mm. And Chris goes, um... Should I do this H three thing? I go. It's fucking amazing. That's I so love cool. Those Thank two. you, dude. <laughs> no, oh, you're dude. not done. You're just not, that not, part. not only done. I didn't, I'm not doing it for you. Right. I'm doing it for I, him too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it helps him. Yeah. Right. But Dalia was like, "I'm gonna do it." Has he done it yet? No, no, no. no it's coming up. It's coming up, right? Yeah. yeah. But he's gonna do it, right? Yeah. 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 But my point is, is that so you? It's already you. If you're getting people to go, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I want to do it. Tell me about them. And I'm mm -hmm. getting those calls. Mm -hmm. Then you've already it's a, you're already a thing. That's really exciting. It is. You're yeah. a fucking thing already. No, that's great to hear. <laughs> but uh, what I have to say is, I have to say <laughs> what I'm trying to twist it is, I have to realize that Tiger Belly mm -hmm. is also a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? definitely. And I'm always going. How do I get the next thing? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I do that too. It's so annoying. But I, it's, it's annoying. But I should already go. I already have the thing. It's like self torture. But you can't, you can't mm -hmm. rest like on we, your. Like we can't let ourselves be happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always like, That's oh, this is great, but they, this is already like not good enough. They it's, say, it's always like. They say, who's they? It's a proverbial kind of thought that, you know, the people who are always not satisfied are the ones that are always pushing to higher ground, yeah. right? I comfort myself with that because I'm always dissatisfied. Yeah. I mean, there's a level of like discontent that's actually pretty true. good and healthy, sure. but you've got to be there's, at least yeah. a you got to have a little bit a of a little satisfaction. Okay, you know yeah. what? That would that went well. Yeah. Or I was happy with that. Yeah. Or else you're it's a never ending diet really does. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel the same way. I I, I swear to God, I'm yeah. fucking I'm very depressed and miserable person. It's a never <laughs> I think I, I I do think I think <laughs> I'm clinically end. depressed. But at least you guys have bought, do barbecues. We don't even do that. It's we just sit in our hole. We don't cry. barbecue that much. We We're not like out there flipping burgers every day. <laughs> 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 it's like I all I, all I ever wanted was you know, I've been telling Kalila like, why can't I get on a show? I got on a show, it gets picked up for a second season, and people go, hey, congratulations! I go, oh yeah, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm fifth lead, mm -hmm. or like I just say some sort of bullshit negative thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's something that I've always wanted to do. The mm -hmm. thing and is, it's when so you, dumb, when, and I hate that about human nature and about mm -hmm. me. When you become yeah. the guy that's like, I'm so fucking stoked, I got this job. There's something very unfunny about that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. People who are like uh -huh. spiritually balanced or actualized they're the or most content, dull people they're on the never planet. fucking funny. Never. Yeah. Yeah. It's it almost seems so weird to me that I don't trust them. It's like what, yeah, are, you, no, it's what right. are you hiding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't trust them. They're the they're the most unhinged. <laughs> those those are the ones that have like kids in their basement. Exactly. Right. What I was right. <laughs> oh, you're satisfied with your job? Tell me about what's in your basement. Yeah. Freak. Bones. Human yeah. bones. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have a friend, she always talks about like past life regressions and being like being a, some type of spiritual leader and she does like hypnot like hip she hypnotizes people. And she seems so like seemingly balanced and perfect. Not mm -hmm. only is she not funny, but if you met her in real life, she's a fucking nutcase. Mm -hmm. Like you right. just see, you're like, dude, just stand mm -hmm. at least Back 10 feet up. away yeah. from me. Like, you know, don't point a knife yeah. in my direction. She's scary. Yeah. Really? But, um, but I, is there, is yeah. there a balance? Yeah, I don't there's know. There's some, there's a, there's a rare breed of, I have some people who I know that are, that do enjoy balance in their life. But it's, I have to tell you, I think it's rare. Because I have a lot of friends in showbiz, and I was just talking with them last week. They're all fucking miserable. It's never going to end, is basically what we were saying. Isn't that why Macaulay Culkin got out? He's, he had that whole career but now he's gone. Now he's back. Mm -hmm. he's he just did back. Ellen. He's he just did Ellen. <laughs> is, is he back? He's in a what? show now, no? Oh, is he? 
He was like trolling yeah. people. On I don't know. I get confused. Twitter His brothers out there, and they, oh, they look the know. same. No, yeah. he's no. He just did Ellen. He just did Kimmel. Hmm. He, he is because he's promoting his podcast. Oh, a podcast. Right. Oh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. oh, he gets yeah. to go on Kimmel to promote a I podcast. I know what the fuck. No, yeah. what a fucking asshole. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Does that even help? I feel like Kimmel. Like, who are you talking to? You know what I mean? These people aren't podcast people. <laughs> no, they're not. See, that's another. thing. And that... how stressful is it to be on Kimmel? Right. I don't even think it's equivalent exchange. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd almost pass on that because I'd be too stressed. Yeah, but here's another interesting thing that you just tapped on. I wanted to end, but we can't end. Now. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot end right now. You, you no, fucked no, no. it up. You, you, break, up. you could break the record if yeah. we keep going. I'm not gonna break the record. Wait, what's the I'm record? Not, it's not that. Uh, a little over hour thirty. Can that's break the record. The record? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is this. Okay, we're not breaking the record today. Okay? <laughs> he won't give that to you. Power. <laughs> but here's never the shut ultimate up. thing that you just did. But we're gonna. I, this is the. You know, I'm not gonna even say what I'm gonna say. I can't have a win. I can't, have, I can't have a win. Dude. Ethan's not gonna win you today, right? You gotta say it. You gotta say no, it. what I was gonna say, say is this: is that it's so funny that you said that because there is a different group of people. I'll give you an example. Um, I get Tiger Belly mm -hmm. ten times a day. I get Mad TV, you know, five times a day. Hmm. Zero times have I gotten splitting up together. That sitcom that got picked mm. up, right? And I go around, no one's ever said anything. Mm -hmm. I love the show. Yeah. I love you on that, right? right? Never, right? And so what I'm saying is, is I know, I look at the numbers, and you, you know, we got our opening weekend, we got eight million viewers. Mm -hmm. That's a hell of a lot of people. But these are people I'll never see. What is it? Mm -hmm. You know what, that's what kind of frustrates me about what we do, is because when we talk about something or we have someone on, the people really respond. Yeah. It's a different vibe. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, exactly? What I mean, I guess, is that the connection with our audience is way more direct and way more profound. Sure. Yes. And so if somebody comes on to promote something, I think they'll get way more out of it mm -hmm. than Jimmy Kimmel with five million people. Mm -hmm. Right. A million with us is worth, I think, way more than five million with Jimmy Kimmel. And it's frustrating that people don't understand that because a lot of people are like, who the fuck, like, oh, po you know what I mean? They, they snub. It's so funny because my numbers on the road, I can see it with ticket sales because mm -hmm. I do live shows, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we started this and I started doing H3 and these other one, uh, things that mm -hmm. I do, mm -hmm. um, I, I tripled the amount of people really? that come to my shows. Mm -hmm. I sell out now. That's Before, awesome. by That's doing awesome. all the other stuff, zero. That's great. Mm. Okay? So what I'm That's saying so is, true. Like, it's yeah, so true. J nobody watching Jimmy Kimmel gives a fuck. I don't know why it is, but people are sitting at their computer. They're listening. They're connected. Mm -hmm. But it's people on Jimmy Kimmel are sitting there with the fucking like, in, in their yeah, bed yeah. with the remote, and they, they like don't our listen. Stuff our stuff people would choose to watch and something like Jimmy Kimmel you don't really choose oh, to watch that that's a great fucking mm -hmm. point right. nobody wants to wants to watch Jimmy it's like, Kimmel it's yeah. what's on it's TV it's just there it's mm -hmm. just there yeah. and that's a great line from Seinfeld they go they he, when they're pitching the show they say why would anybody watch this and George goes because it's on TV <laughs> ah, <laughs> and what Rodney King said people <laughs> love each other, other. God bless them. forever God bless them. Okay. <laughs> but it's in, when you said that it's interesting so what I'm saying is is that so at the end of the day, and let me just um, close it all up by saying How this. How much? What time is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, quick, a little more, man. Little but more. We haven't even had the question yet. Yeah, I know. It's going to go. Oh, by the way, the did you know that... Uh, we're not doing the question. We're cutting it out. <laughs> <laughs> we're cutting it out. Wanted, I, I, honestly, I, we're cutting the question I out. There's no way... No, that, I wanted to talk no, 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 about something. No, no, no. You're not going to get the record. No, I, I want you to have it. it. I really don't want you to have it. I want to talk about it. Anyway, let's have a round of applause for our question. We have to do the question. Yeah, we have to do the question. I wanted to ask you about Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley. You talked about Stardew Valley was a big hit on my podcast. It was? Yeah, the, the clip. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, clip so of you just you. talking about this little yeah, yeah, game yeah. Got, had over 300,000 mm -hmm. views. What the hell? And the people on the subreddit were going crazy. They yes, loved it. Oh, they were moved on. I moved on. Uh, I did two characters with, with Stardew. I, um, I got um, $10 million or $15 million per character, Killing which means it. that Gosh, I had God. all the wizard stuff, like the Gosh, towers and the golden, the golden clock, right. where it takes all the debris. Um, it just gets to the point where it's like I have so much money I don't even know I mean you can go to this casino and buy this statue from this <laughs> really? guy which costs a million dollars but I had 15 of those so I cost I spent like 15 million dollars right oh my I'm God. just buying this test yeah and then you're and my kids are running around and, and everything and then you just get to the point where you go oh I'm 47 
<laughs> in real life. In real life. In real life. And this is ridiculous. Right. right. No, I you get you. Know? And then I started playing this other game called Far Cry 5. Intense. Did you like that? I never played I loved that one. it. Is it's the ever, best one out of all of them. Is there ever a game you play when you don't play after like 5 or 10 or 15 hours and you're like, oh no, I'm 47. Like, what games don't make me say that? <laughs> and, I, and I don't say that because I'm a gamer too. And part of the joy that's lost for me is that I'm like, I always have this feeling of like, I should be doing something else. Even though I hate that, I want to be in the moment and just enjoy the video games. Well, you know, I, when, when Jordan Peele got that Oscar... Right, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, <laughs> right, this is a because he's he the one that introduced me to video games. Really? Huh. Yeah, he is the one that introduced me to. I remember going to the GameStop to get Morrowind. Mm. Right. He's the one that goes, you got to get that game because he's like lit in the RPGs and cool. mm. Bethesda. So, and then he stopped playing, stopped smoking pot, and in that now he's now he's a know, superstar. A, yeah, he's a you know Academy Award winner, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm. I mean, I, I, even if I didn't play video games, I would ne never be able to do what he does because he's just, <laughs> right? But my point is is that I could have achieved more, but the pleasure that I get from it I miss outweighs the I miss Oscar. It. Outweighs an Oscar. Throw that Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, before, when I was working a desk job, a day job, a nine to five, yeah. I would come home and play video games and it was like, that was my joy, you know? And I, yeah. I feel like that joy is gone. I don't know if it's because I'm depressed. I don't know if it's because I've, Maybe it's because I'm depressed. I don't know, but I feel like there's always a there's always like a sensor in me that's like, eh, you should be doing something else. Yeah, and you know what? That's a normal, healthy thing. I just don't have that. I refuse to get it. You know, there's I'm, a balance. I'm gonna play tonight. I don't give a fuck. What are you gonna play tonight? I started over with I, I finished Far Cry Five, and I started over well, with the God of War. It? I finished, and it. it's a grinding Whoa. game too. Did like, you play God of War? Grind. I hate slashers. He doesn't I loved do. It. He doesn't do PlayStation. I, Oh no! You don't I don't do PlayStation, PlayStation, and I also don't. I don't like slash them, hack them stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like um, sneaking. It's, it's very RPG though, too. I know it is. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I like <laughs> I like Far Cry because um, I should play Far Cry. I like I'd sneaking. Like yeah, I like taking my binoculars mm -hmm. and scoping out a compound, open world, and finding out where everyone is. Mm -hmm. Right. I like figure out how to get into the compound without anyone seeing me. Right. I like throwing rocks. <laughs> You can throw you're, rocks. You're stealth boy. Yeah, when you throw a rock, the the characters go, "Huh? Who's that? Whoa, whoa. Who's that?" I guess the coast is clear. Yeah, yeah, and, right. And so they'll go toward the rock, oh, and right. I sneak up behind them, right? And I got caca, and I kill them. You get right? the satisfaction. What's your favorite game of all time? He's trying to end the show. Yeah, yeah. my favorite game of all time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my, favorite, yeah my favorite game of all time. I'm not the host. Is, 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 is the, the, the is Fallout? Is Fallout? <laughs> I was wondering if you were a Fallout guy. Which one though? I really enjoyed the last one. Four. Yeah. I never played four because everybody says, oh, it's the, just like three. And I no, it's not, it's, it, it, it's not even in the same I love, game. I love Fallout. Fallout 4. And I skipped the whole fucking thing because everybody dissuaded me. No, Fallout 4 is the, a masterpiece because... It what about has, New Vegas? It's way better because... Okay, New, I'm going to play it then. I'll, I'll tell you why New Vegas is better than New Vegas because New Vegas, there was no house. Right. Oh, you like the house aspect? I like building a house from ground up. Huh. You can, you can, whatever. Well, what about the rest of the game? Anyway, the what's, the, what's the question? To me. What, what is the question? Do you want a, <laughs> do you want a, <laughs> unhelpful advice, go ahead. Do you want a dark one or a relationship? Give me a dark one. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and H3. Hey everyone, Whoa, my name is that a voice Whoa. filter? Stop it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Matt, and I'm 25 from Ontario, Canada. Over the past 10 years, I've been dealing with severe depression and anxiety. Mm. This caused me to be withdrawn and secluded even when I would like to go out and be active. Mm. At one point, it was so bad that I ended up losing a great job in tele uh, telecommunications industry, as well as my relationship with my single father, because I simply couldn't find the motivation to even wake up and go to work. Wow. I ended up becoming homeless for a short time before being approved for government assistance. Since then, I found a home, and after getting my father to one of uh, the therapy sessions I've been attending, he seemed to start to understand why I am the way I am. Even though everything has seemed to have gotten better on the outside looking in, I can tell you today I feel worse than when I was homeless. Damn. Every day seems to be worse than the last one. I can't seem to shake the feeling off. I have no motivation. I have no sex drive. I have no creativity. I have no real hunger for anything. This feeling has caused me to attempt to commit suicide about a month ago. And I was wondering if any of you have dealt with similar feelings before. 
What have you done to escape them? I thought of looking for a girlfriend, but I also don't want anyone to have do the experience me right now. Do the now. relationship one. <laughs> again, That's dark. That again, is dark. Again, what do you think I can do to help move on and escape these feelings? Thanks for taking the time to read. Oh my God. Matt. Have, have to you I think there's something else going on. I think, did, did he say he does drugs? Did he say that? Uh, no drugs. I feel like there's, I mean, I'm, I don't know. It, it, it does, it literally reminds me of the introduction to Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. Mm. You know, he was a guy who had no lust for life. He was living in a one bedroom. I think he lived in Canada as well. It was cold. He was sitting on a mattress. And he's like, yeah, I'm done with life. Mm. Right? And then he had a spiritual awakening in the middle of the night. Mm. And his life changed. And um, he created the philosophy of, I mean, living in the moment is probably in the Sermon on the Mount and and whatnot, but he, um, that was his thing. I think that reading that introduction and reading that book would help this person, individual. I, I, can I just tell why? Got a Be sigh. He got a sigh because, <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, you, you sigh, but let me just, let me just, can I just give me a second, okay? Mm -hmm. You're flexing, I don't know why, <laughs> but here's the thing, Quit okay? Let me just say what I'm gonna say, okay? Is, the whole philosophy, even in 12-step groups, they say one day at a time, right? but that's not mm -hmm. what they mean. Mm -hmm. What they mean is live in the moment, okay? Because most people walk around, they live in the past and in the future, what's gonna happen in mm -hmm. the future, and they worry about what happened in the past, right? And the thing is, is that I used to have a AA sponsor named Dan, right, when I was in, 17 years old, and he used to, um, step in front of me right and go and clap now here mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. here and he would constantly get you clap. out of your head mm -hmm. yeah right right here mm -hmm. now now yeah. right mm -hmm. and he used to get me out of my thing you know mm -hmm. a lot of the torment 99 percent of my torment is in my mind of course right so stuck in and your head. yes yeah. i'm stuck in my head and i'm thinking about everything <laughs> but mm -hmm. being here right now in this present moment and you you balk and you sigh, baby. Okay, <laughs> I, but but what I'm saying is is that you flex. I think this, that you you're flex. correct. I just yeah. don't. I think that if you're getting everything that you just said applies to most of the population. But having been somebody who has been so deeply depressed mm. and has attempted to take her own life, that doesn't quite apply. Because I think that here's a person who is so just bereft of like every ounce of everything in his life. I mm -hmm. don't, I think that he is explaining and describing somebody who is truly and chemically depressed. Mm -hmm. And you can be, the way I always used to feel was you could put, surround me with everybody that I love on the sunniest day of the year mm -hmm. in Disneyland mm -hmm. and if I'm feeling that pit of depression, there's no getting me out of that. Sure. And it's just that a chemical imbalance that's just keeping me down there irrationally. Well, there's 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 different levels to approaching depression, like especially one that severe, right? First of all, the guy, he has a desire to get better. That's the, that's yeah, the first and most right. important thing. Mm -hmm. He recognizes I'm sick, there's no joy in my life, and I want to get better, mm -hmm. so that's important. He still has help. Bobby is fucking snoozing on. No, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. This is how I listen. <laughs> You're in deep. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, here's, here's. I was here's, like, should we wrap it up? No, no, don't wrap it up. It what, is no, late. no, 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 no. That's not what it is. So, no, just let me just say something before. I'm not okay. going to say anything about this situation. Okay? okay, I heard everything you said. I'm hearing everything you said. But for me to not, you know, interrupt and really take in what you're saying. I have to close my eyes and I pretend that I'm sleeping. Okay, <laughs> but, don't, but don't take that as offense Good okay. to it. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna the weird thing is like because I've been speaking mostly to you because we've been having a direct. But, but when not. you're nodding off, mm -hmm. don't do it. But then if, if I if I if I'm like I this, can't look at your eyes. If I'm like this, <laughs> no. I won't be listening to you. Yeah, close your eyes. I'll close go my back, eyes. Everything you said. So start go over. Sleep. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got a desire to get better. That's first most important. Mm. That's that's good. He's still got the spark in him. Okay. The thing is like. When you're that depressed and you're that you have you're that hopeless, you you need to force yourself to do things. Mm -hmm. Like he's, it's so easy to just get stuck in bed right. and be like, I feel like shit, and there's no fucking reason for me to get out of bed. But on the other hand, in his mind, he knows 
that he is depressed and he hates that he doesn't want to get out mm-hmm, of bed. Mm-hmm. So what do you need to do? You know what you need to do. You need to go out of bed. You need mm-hmm. to go for to apply for a job. You need to go do your laundry, whatever it is. You have to force yourself to do it because mm-hmm. you know that's right. what you need to do, even though you don't want to do it. Yeah. You have to fake it. You have to fake it and fake it and fake it. That's and true. So you get your shit together, but just by sheer force of will. Yeah. I think that you do, there is an element, you have to sort of white knuckle yourself yeah. out of that. And I had a really good therapist when I was um, in my teens, and we used to do weekly contracts of mm. things that I would force myself to do. Right. Um, and I think that really, really helped. I mean, even things like, something as simple as working out or even raising your sure. you know your endorphins just a little it's bit it's a battle day. and you yeah. won and you won that day yeah and i'm somebody who like lives with extreme anxiety like i don't mm. think there's a minute in my life where like mm-hmm. my palms aren't like sweating profusely or like mm-hmm. you know i'm trying to like i always feel like i'm trying to i feel like i have to get out of a situation that's always what my body feels mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like even if it's just something flee. really pleasant like i feel like i have to flee mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with someone who's that clinically depressed yeah. chemically depressed you need you need help. You need professional help as well. Yeah, and it, you need drugs. Drugs are there for people who who they're really effective, and and it helps people who who really need it. There's two types of people who are depressed. There's people who are like circumstantially depressed, mm-hmm. and there's a couple of things in their life that bothers them, things about themselves that they want to improve. And if you've tried all of that stuff, because mm-hmm. most people, in my opinion, don't go through the effort of actually confronting all those things they don't like about themselves to get out of that rut, because mm-hmm. it's easy. It's, it's much easier not to. But if you've gone through the effort of doing all that stuff mm-hmm. and you still are faking it and you're still depressed, then that's when you need drugs. Yeah, I agree. But at Cartel, <laughs> also a really great book, Power of Now, right? No, what, well, well, a, a simple thing like that, you never know what's gonna spark. Yeah, yeah, uh, I have one Japanese word I wanna say, Hikikomori. Oh yeah, uh, yeah shut-ins. Mm. Yeah, Hikikomori. I, um, that's my, that is my, um, that's how I feel what heaven would be like. Hmm. Being a shut-in? Yes. Hmm. I don't want, you think I want to communicate with people? I'm a depressed guy myself. You know, I did dr- drugs, like, you know, I, you know, I did everything I could to fill that hole inside of me. I fucking hate it. Hmm. My One of my biggest fantasies is to shoot heroin in a trailer in the desert and die. Oof. I mean, that's what I want to do, mm-hmm. right? But you know, I have parents and my brother and people around me that love me and rely on me, and I have to try. You know, I have to try to be a part of. You know, so I get. I mean, I, I I'm probably not clinically depressed like this person that just emailed, but you know, I get you know what he's saying. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, I you think I want to read Power or Not? You think I want to read self help books? You think I want to mm-hmm. go to an AA meeting? You think I want to? do any of the things that I do to get out of, you know, but I don't, but I have to. But you're still right. It might, you know, so, you might find something that like mm-hmm. sparks. Something. He's yeah, gotta you gotta go out know. and try something. But that, but the I'm part saying. is being open. Like, okay, grab mm-hmm. the book, read it. You have mm-hmm. to be willing and desperate to find, yes. to find your answer. <laughs> yeah. I feel and like not the, stop or die it. or I, die. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like the fact that he even wrote this message and got for us to answer it yeah is a really big accomplishment and he was able to express like, it eloquently he yeah, was able to like when like, i'm when i'm in that depressed mode i feel like i would never even bring myself to write that message mm-hmm. and send it so that's true that's a good well what step. a wonderful podcast <laughs> how what's the uh what's time, time stamp? it's very close to two hours yeah. and that yeah is that the record? Damn. I, I, you're gonna, I think, I, you know what? I think no, but you're going to cut it down. And then I'm not going to cut it down. You're artificial. There really, no, there really is nothing about this podcast nice. that I need to cut out. There was that one part where you dropped the N word with like a hard E on it. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. I didn't, I didn't do that. You guys should probably cut that. That's, yeah, that's not, that's not going to be cut. There's nothing about this podcast going to be cut. And I, let me say that the pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. You. No, I'm being real. Did you have a good time here or no? Oh. I did. Great. I loved everything. <laughs> no, you really. didn't feel like it you felt like comfortable, I'm, right? It sounds like I'm being yeah. sarcastic, but like the first time we sat down, I thought I, I had a wonderful time. It's really so funny. I felt great. the same way. You know, yeah. I felt like it flowed, and I felt like um, there, nothing was forced. And I tried to be boring myself, <laughs> you know I mean? and it came out organically. It's, yeah. it's a little tool that I learned from you. It's <laughs> powerful to be boring. Yeah, and it, well, I also learned that um, Tiger Belly is the thing is the my foundation. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I found out 
you know, from you. Mm. And I also found out that um, you guys are cool. Thanks, Dag. <laughs> you know, you so cool, give them a round of applause, cool. guys. Uh, anything you want to promote aside from H three? No. Uh, Our dog Shredder. Dog Shredder's oh, the best. He's name. the cutest little guy. <laughs> you love. I met Shredder. Yeah, I love Shredder. Yeah, yeah he's so, Shredder's he's the best. The he's like life changing. <laughs> he's just uh, a little guy. He is. No, I just think I love. I love every. I love this. I love this. You guys rock. Thanks for having us here. Yeah. Seriously. It's, you guys, are you guys going to have kids? Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually trying. We're trying. We talk about a little bit on the podcast that everyone around us is having kids and shitting out babies and doing all this shit. And it's just, it's not happening for us yet. But we're trying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go squirt in a cup soon. Yes. I'm going to freeze my eggs this year. Oh. Really? Just yeah. in case? Yeah. I also is your think cum like. Thick? Um, yeah. It seems average from what I've seen. It's not, like, seem it's not like, like it's not like Elmer's glue or anything. Yeah, like I, I, it seems like you do like marshmallow style. No, it's like not like it's thick as fuck. Like you no. could like make. Is that a compliment? Are you complimenting me? Yeah, I just feel like you have your. You know, I can't tell as a compliment, but I think it is. That you have he thick cum. You have a thick ass cum. Like dog. really thick, condensed. What's the theory? Cum. He thinks that it somehow his works better. I don't know. What's your cum look like? Really thick and very small baby dollop. Yeah, like the tiniest <laughs> amount you have ever seen. I don't even think like, it could be measured in a but cup. But it's thick, so it's basically it what I'm saying. It's potent. Way. It's condensed. It's like condensed. A dab will do ya. A dab will do ya. Yeah. A dab will do ya. Exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. A dab will do ya. Yeah, but it's not. You can see the white, right? I have a good vol. I have good volume. But. Have you ever smelled your own cum? Well, I haven't, I haven't like directly gone up to my nose, but like sometimes you'll jizz in a rag and you get, and you can smell it after it dries. It's, yeah, it smells like um to me chlorine. Mm. I don't yeah. smell chlorine. Right, I but smell chlorine. You know, chlorine a little bit. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I find it to be a pleasant smell. Do you? I don't like it at all. When I smell that, I'm like, it smells like rock bottom. If I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> but about the things that come out of your body, right? Yeah. It's probably up there, right? That's in terms true. Of pleasant. If I had the smell of all of the things that come out of my body, that's the best one. Like shit is probably the rock bottom. Shit, yeah, but it, I mean, I don't. <laughs> You I, I, I generally don't shit on the floor of my. <laughs> I understand. Uh, but do you ever shit and then look at it and go, yeah? Yeah, every time. Okay, me too. Every yeah. time. Yeah. You have to look. Anyway, sometimes I wipe too much. I can't see it though. <laughs> you know what I did the other day? You know what? You know what happens to me? That's that's cool. But, um, you know what I did the other day what? was I I clinched it. Yeah. It's like a pie, like a shit pie. I clinched it, and the other like a to tip didn't wouldn't come out. Oh, so God. basically, I just had an open asshole with like a little bit of poop. You coming grab out. it. No, you I have don't to grab, grab it. No, you have to grab it. You suck it, it back so in. So you push it, find, like so that it's all the way out, and yeah. then you grab it. Wait, what did you do? You with have it? to grab it. I, I <laughs> grab it. Yeah, I, grab I, it. I wait for the next fucking, the next time. So it's just. Oh my god! god. No, you don't. No, yeah, you don't. It's so unhealthy. It becomes the front of the next. T- but that means you, that means you, <laughs> a human centipede. What that means it? you yeah. sucked it back in. No, imagine your imagine your asshole as a factory. Okay. So <laughs> I'm making Twinkies, for instance, right? Yes. So one Twinkie is not fully formed, right? Mm-hmm. I stick it, you know, and then the t- the back end of that Twinkie but becomes got, the front end of the new Twinkie. But you can't. Yeah, but you got to suck it back in, or you you're in or you're out. <laughs> no, you stay or you go. Sometimes it, uh, he's saying that it's still at the front of the next of the line yeah, of yeah, the yeah, next yeah. Twinkie, yeah. but it's not. You need to refrigerate it, bro. It, it, the, I'll tell you it, why it, I know it's not a back in. Because my underwear looks like from your. You don't shit hanging from your asshole. But how do you get fucking the skid marks? I don't. I do. Well, what I'm saying is, is that it's not all the way back in, bro. Wipe your ass, bro. Wipe your. That's not what it is. What it is is it's a little bit open, and there's still. The t- a tail end of the I'm a huge that proponent of baby Wouldn't that be wipes. really uncomfortable? Yeah. It is uncomfortable. I don't oh, like it. Okay, but that's how we're going to end the podcast. <laughs> in that way. Do you use baby wipes? Do you... Uh, I, sometimes when I'm on I the road, I do, but... I love baby wipes. Sometimes I don't. I let it hang. You always end with a but wet one. But it's becoming a moral problem of... What? Apparently, the flushable baby wipes are not flushable. They're not. They're lying to Mm-mm. you. What was this has not? become kind of a big conflict yeah. in my life, if I'm yeah. being honest. Oh, really? Because I'm a huge baby. I love, I live and die by the baby wipe. Do you do dry first and then baby wipe yeah. at the end? You can't start wet, otherwise mm-hmm. your whole world is <laughs> broken. Yeah, <it's> crazy. <laughs> I'd start wet, but anyway. To each his own. You start with wet toilet Touché. paper? Touche. He uses Touché. paper towels. Toupee. Oh. Or, 
Yeah, paper towels. Have, if the plumber is going to be here several times. You going with paper towels? Mm. He's slow nodding right now. How many times do you wipe on a he single likes the square? Traction. He needs traction. I'm about to say something so truthful to you. I'm going to say something so truthful to you, it's going to boggle my minds. Mm -hmm. No one ever taught me how to do it, and I think I'm doing it wrong. Oh. Do you go back to Why front? Do <gasps> I think go, I'm doing it wrong. Wait, hold on. Do Tell you go me back about to it. front? Yeah. <gasps> no wonder you know I your do that. balls. I do that. I do that. I do that. Yeah. I always get chastised. I do that too. I was I cup my balls in my dick and I cup like I don't that. cup. I let it fucking. I was shocked. I gotta hold I it. Write it out. Yeah, yeah that's see, that's a big no no for girls, especially. Well, yes. I don't have a vagina. But you know what? Um, there was this one time Allegedly. when we first started dating, <laughs> where the balls smelled a little bit like <laughs> oh, sus. Oh, you know? nice. And that's when I I figured that he probably was a back to front wife. Whoa. Anyway, um, well, this is age three. I'm not talking anymore. Okay. Can I tell? I think I've had a. S it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? It's over. In college once. It's <laughs> over. I had a girl who was going down on me, and she was like, it's a little, and I, she was Gross. doing like some ball work. Yeah. And ball. she was like, it's a little like spicy. Like, what is that? Spicy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I was stumped by it. And then only years later did I realize I probably got a little shit on my balls, and that was yeah. what it was. Gross. Let me ask you this question. Can I ask you this question? What's more disturbing? <laughs> What's more disturbing? If you're eating a girl out, right, and you s smell poo, <laughs> or you smell blood. Poo is way worse. Poo, blood. Who cares about blood? Well, they're poo, both bad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. The blood's the no, no, no. That's... The blood has happened to me, and it was it was horrifying. Blood and poo at the poo same time. Oh. Oh. Me. And that's you got started. both. Yeah. Wait, that's why? That's, that's you got a two for it. She was dead. That's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I'm done. Yeah. I'm All right, done. I can't do it. All right, bye. You know, just, by the way, five more minutes would have been exactly two. Hours. No, 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 no. We're not doing five more minutes. Oh, we're, we're done? Not. That's we're just done. like yeah. that? Oh, that was a hard cut. Yeah. Uh, guys, we'll be right back. He usually just runs off. Wow, what a great podcast. What a long podcast. I am so deeply in love with Hila. She's fantastic. got the record. I, off and on the record, let that be known, that I think that she's my soul sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Same. there's so many things about her that I feel like, oh shit, yeah, yeah. she's like my kind of girl. More importantly, you guys have the same watch. And you're the only <gasps> person know? I've ever yes. seen with that watch. No, that's crazy. Because I mean, I know that freestyle watches, freestyle watches, um, <laughs> not our sponsor. A lot of people like wear them, but not a lot of people wear this specific one. Yeah. Um, and you know, you really gotta kind of dig to find them. So yeah, I thought that was a a, a real life connection there. Um, any show dates for Bobby? Bobby will be at um, uh, it will be in Seattle this weekend, the seventh through the ninth, and the follow next week at San Francisco Punchline. Cool. Go to BobbyLeeLive.com for tickets. That's great. Oh my God, Gilbert! <laughs> what a wonderful cup you have in your hand. <laughs> <pants. laughs> oh, this is just a Tiger Belly mug, the first Ooh. and only an exclusive mug that says "Nosotros Papaya" on it. Wow. You are a lucky man to be holding such a relic. What a you should relic. be on QVC, <laughs> maybe. It's, it's not a relic. What? Here, give me. I need to be, do better in my QVC moments. Yeah, you're good. You have a good uh, QVC smile. Here we have a matte black color, um, internal bright green shade <laughs> of um, my favorite color, wow. along with a beautiful little um, papaya drawn up by um, our artist extraordinaire, Gilbert yeah. Galan. Um, so please purchase the Tiger Belly mug. When are they available, Gil? Who knows? Just look at our social media. <laughs> hey, with us? Who so, knows? So. That's the fun of it, right? Who knows with the Tiger Belly merch? These are dope, though. Oh, but George, what is that on your body? Oh, uh... Yum or yuck? I would say this is the first time I would have to say yum, George. Yeah, well, not, not a yuck. Not to your face, but just to like, you know, your chest area. And if you are on audio, well, you got to jump on uh, Bryce. you got to jump on the social on uh, the social media or YouTube so you can see that what George and I, what I'm wearing, which is a uh, a new shirt that will be coming out uh, with yours truly supreme leader um, Bobby Lee. When? Uh who knows? It's Tiger Belly merch, yeah. but soon. But soon. Well, we still have to put in the order for the full version. So at least a couple. Or maybe no, no. Nice. We'll just stay soon. Who yeah. knows? Who yeah. knows? Tiger Belly really merch. Or maybe soon. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, how is the puppy uh, Mayday, right? Oh, pr 
Fritter. Fritter is still available, you guys. If you guys are interested in adopting, check out the pictures on my latest Instagram post. Or, or you can go to at Mayday Rescue and fill out an application for the little guy. He's six weeks. He's already weaned. Mm-hmm. And he's um, the cutest little thing. So do that. And remember to sleep like the slept king and slept queen. Go to brooklinen.com. Use promo code TigerBelly for $20 off and free shipping. Or cut a hole in it and do what they did. Oh, I want to say one more thing because mm-hmm. I'm not going to. Do I still have time, Bryce? Yes, you're okay. good. Um, I did uh, my really good friend Jeremiah Watkins um, podcast last oh, week. Oh, yeah. And it's called Jeremiah Wonders. And I might have said a little bit of. A whole lot of bullshit on there, but um, I wanted to help him out and promote his podcast. So you guys, um, please listen to that. It's uh, called Jeremiah Wonders. Jeremiah Wonders, and support your fellow uh, papaya and listener of this podcast at Rebels Refinery by finding their men's grooming products at Target, or get twenty percent off at RebelsRefinery dot com with the promo code Tiger Belly. And if you're watching on this video, George is holding a beautiful black skull lip balm. Wow. Everyone make a meme with Kala's face right now. And shout out to everyone who wrote us a five-star review on iTunes. Remember to sign your name if you want to shout out a few recent uh, reviewers. Brandon Nielsen, Eddie Danko, Brent Radcliffe, and Jason Brock. Keep them coming. And if you like uh, small, bite-sized Tiger Belly highlights and clips, check out the new Tiger Belly Clips channel on YouTube. And to follow us on Instagram at Tiger Belly, on Twitter at The Tiger Belly, and email us any questions, unhelpful advice, questions at thetigerbelly at gmail.com. You can follow Kalala on all social media at Calamity K. George Kimmel at George underscore Kimmel. Bryce at And all of Bobby's shows and information at bobbyleelive.com. Have a good night. <laughs>